to North Korea's leader for handing over the remains that are now in Hawaii. Our boys are coming home. That was Vice President Mike Pence at a homecoming ceremony more than six decades in the making. The vice president, whose father fought in the Korean War, headed up Wednesday's delegation, greeting cases of what are believed to be the remains of Americans killed fighting in the Korean War. That's Fox's Dan Springer in Honolulu. The ceremony comes weeks after President Trump's face-to-face -face meeting with Kim Jong-un in Singapore. It was there the North Korean leader committed to getting remains of American servicemen returned home. Next up, the long process of identifying the remains in those 55 flag-draped boxes. Democrats are upset over the president's tweet yesterday that the attorney general should stop the rigged witch hunt right now. Referring to the special counsel Mueller's Russia investigation, his critics call it obstruction of justice. But Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani says, no, it's not. He expresses his opinions on Twitter. He used the word should, he didn't use the word must. And there was no presidential directive that followed it. Now Giuliani says he is still negotiating with the special counsel about a possible trump Mueller interview. The Washington Post reports Mueller is willing to reduce the number of questions for the president. The president's lost a round in federal appeals court in the battle with cities limiting cooperation with federal immigration officials. The Ninth Circuit ruling in a 2-1 decision that it's unconstitutional to withhold funding from sanctuary cities. The ruling applies to two lawsuits brought in California. San Francisco's mayor tweeting, this was not the first attack on our values by the Trump administration and it will not be the last. But the Department of Justice called this a victory for criminal aliens in California. Fox as Griff Jenkins as wildfires keep charring California. The state's already spent a quarter of its annual fire budget one month into the fiscal year. Blaze still burning in and around Redding has killed six people, destroyed more than a thousand homes. Fox News, fair and balanced. In Chicago, we have a uh, partly cloudy sky right now, 72 degrees, but skies will uh, stay cloudy through the mid morning. Could see a little afternoon sun, but beginning to warm up at 5.02 on AM 560. The answer, good morning. I'm Mike Scott. Anti-violence protesters planning to shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive and some of the streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon. The marchers say they will set off at 4 p.m. on Lakeshore Drive near Diversity before heading to Wrigleyville. The Cubs have a home game at 7.05. Organizers say their demonstration is being held to protest city violence and economic inequality. State lawmaker from the northwest suburbs is stepping down following allegations that he posted nude photographs of an ex-girlfriend on social media. Illinois Representative Nick Sauer resigned yesterday saying addressing the accusations would affect his ability to serve. His resignation came several hours after Politico published a report claiming the Lake Barrington Republican created a fake Instagram account filled with nude photographs of the woman in order to lure men into graphic discussions. Willie Wilson is denying allegations he's trying to buy your vote in the city of Chicago to become mayor. The businessman discussed the accusations yesterday while handing out more than $100,000 to Cook County residents. Today is not about political for me. You know, this is a day for trying to help, you know, and that's exactly what I'm, what I'm doing. Wilson says the move is about helping people pay their property taxes. The Illinois Campaign for Political Reform has filed a complaint against Wilson, claiming he violated campaign finance law when he didn't report an earlier giveaway of more than $200,000 at a Southside church. Illinois, one of the states covered by the latest recall over tainted greens. The USDA issuing a new recall for lettuce and salad wrap ingredients packaged by Indianapolis-based food preparer Cato Foods. The USDA says possibly tainted lettuce found its way to stores throughout the Midwest. USDA says there are no reports of illnesses yet in the state, but a similar cyclospora outbreak in May sickened dozens. Doctors in Illinois getting some legal protection to write standing prescriptions for EpiPens. Governor Rauner on Tuesday signed a new law expanding a law that already protects police officers from lawsuits if they use an EpiPen to try and save someone's life. Lawmakers say the idea is to get more EpiPens actually into the hands of law enforcement. Former Illinois Congressman Mel Reynolds is behind bars for the third time. Reynolds reported 
to a Chicago federal lockup yesterday to begin serving the remaining four months of his prison sentence. He was sentenced to six months earlier this year for failing to file tax returns. Between 2009 and 2012, Reynolds is vowing to leave the country when he completes this prison term. Democrats in Indiana say a plan by Republican Indiana Secretary of State Connie Lawson to consolidate voting precincts in Lake County would suppress the vote in some Democrat strongholds. Plan Wednesday eliminates 170 of the county's 523 precincts, including 54 in Gary, 33 in Hammond, and 14 in East Chicago. But a 2017 law requires Lake County to develop a plan to consolidate voting precincts with fewer than act, uh, 600 active voters. Former President Barack Obama lending his backing to a number of candidates, as expected, ahead of the November midterm. He endorsed 81 Democrats, including former Obama financier J.B. Pritzker for Illinois governor. The jail in one western Illinois county this morning is closed until further notice. Jailers in Warren County yesterday closed their doors. They transferred all of their inmates to the jail in Alino because they don't have enough guards. Warren County State's Attorney Andy Doyle yesterday saying two guards left the jail to take other jobs, and that left the county without enough to safely patrol the jail. New details are emerging this morning about allegations of misconduct against Cook County Circuit Court Clerk Dorothy Brown. Affidavits in a new investigation of a former Brown deputy reveal she personally hired each of the 2,300 employees under her command. In the process, Brown collected payments of $10,000 per job through campaign contributions, business loans, and one free trip to India. Brown's lawyer called the claims that she was accepting payoffs for jobs false. Lollapalooza kicks off today in Chicago. Thousands gathering at Grant Park for the annual music festival. The event runs through Sunday. Bruno Mars, The Weekend, Jack White, The Arctic Monkeys, Travis Scott, all on hand this weekend. Chicago sports, Cole Hamels allowed one earned run and struck out nine across five innings. Chicago rolled past the Pirates 9-2 in Pittsburgh. Alex Gordon Homer double drove in four. Royals drubbed the White Sox 10-5. Bears play the first of five preseason games tonight. Chicago taking on the Ravens in the Hall of Fame game from Canton, Ohio. The news is a service of Unbound.org. There's a girl in El Salvador who dreams of becoming an engineer and elder in Uganda who dreams of having a community to call his own. No two dreams are the same. Help one person achieve theirs at unbound.org. 508, a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM 560. As press secretary for President Trump, Sean Spicer had a front row seat to history. And in his new book, he reveals details about what really happened behind the scenes during the campaign and the early days of the administration. On Wednesday, August 8th, Sean Spicer is coming to Chicago. Meet Sean Spicer and get a copy of his new book, The Briefing, at the Museum of Broadcast Communications. Tickets are absolutely free. Thanks to healthinsurancementors.com. Get your tickets at 560theanswer.com slash briefing. That's 560theanswer.com slash briefing. Email phishing attacks cost businesses billions annually in real cash, data loss, and brand damage. Phishing emails are hard to detect because the messages appear to be legitimate to unsuspecting employees. Introducing Barracuda Fish Line, a groundbreaking cloud-based solution designed to help employees recognize sophisticated email phishing attacks through interactive training reinforced by continuous simulation. Transform your employees from a liability into a line of defense. Go to barracuda.com slash pl to learn more. Freak yeah, Jimmy John's. Freak yeah, what if I just needed one sandwich delivered? Freak yeah, we can do that. What about 100 sandwiches? Freak yeah, we can do that. What about 24 sandwiches? Freak yeah, we can do that. 67 sandwiches? Freak yeah, we can do that. You know, 67's a prime number. Freak yeah, a whole number greater than one whose only factors are one in itself, I know. Great. Uh, I'll take one turkey tom, please. Freak yeah, one turkey tom, on the way. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's, freak yeah. What I suffer from is anxiety, along with depression. 
but I feel the anxiety triggers depression more times than not. My first experience with HPR was my initial interview. It was welcoming. It felt very good. I saw results pretty much immediately. Even after my first treatment, I felt different than when I came in. I think HPR could work for, for pretty much anyone. I think that what HPR has done for me was awaken a part of my brain that either stopped working or never worked. I think everybody can benefit from HPR. I'm Alex and HPR Treatments has helped save my life. HPR centers in Chicagoland and Milwaukee offer TMS therapy. In just a few weeks, you can change your life. And it's FDA cleared. It's covered by most insurance, including Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and Medicare. Cure or remission. Get a free consultation. 800-604-0208. 800-604-0208. HPR centers. Go to endmydepression.com. You've heard us say if your roof is needy, call Crown Weedy. Also, if your gutters, siding, windows, or entry door is needy, call Crown Weedy. What's that all about? This is Mark Olson. And Greg Olson, the boys from Crown Weedy. We created a special deal just for you. Replace your roof and receive free gutters. Or replace the siding or windows on your home and receive a free entry door. We'll do a great job and you'll get the Crumweedy promise of installation that is up to manufacturer specifications so your warranty is intact. And get free gutters or an entry door as a thank you. Some restrictions apply and this special won't last long. We fix roof, siding and window problems. We're here. We're a third generation family business that was built on the same conservative values as you. If your home is needy, call Crumweedy. 630-595-8020. 630-595-8020. Get all the info at myroofisneedy.com. Myroofisneedy.com. 511 on AM 560. It is time for a dry basement and a healthy home. It's time to call Permaseal. 800-421-SEAL. Check the roads this morning. In the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center, here's Jim Talamante. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Mike. Well, overnight roadwork has cleared on most of the expressways and tollways. Major closures have lifted, so that's good news. Not seeing any delays right now. There is still an on-ramp closure on the south side of 87th going to the outbound ride. Mike told us about the planned protest on the north side scheduled to close and cause major disruptions including a closure likely of Lakeshore Drive northbound between Fullerton and Belmont and heading west on Belmont to Clark and Addis for the Cubs game. And, of course, there's Lollapalooza in addition to all the existing closures. Also, Michigan Avenue will have a ban of any vehicle larger than a cargo van each day of the festival, today through Sunday, from 1.30 in the afternoon till midnight. And Michigan Avenue will close entirely between Wacker and Roosevelt from 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. each night of the festival. Public transit is recommended, but keep in mind the trains and buses, especially trains, tend to get very, very packed for Lollapalooza. Sometimes there isn't enough room. Traffic service of mothers against drunk driving. For victims of drunk and drug driving, the grief is unique. You're not alone. Pat is here to help. Call their 24-hour victim helpline, 877-MAD-HELP. Visit mad.org, M-A-D-D dot O-R-G. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM560, The Answer. Jim, thank you. Chicago's morning answer starts next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast. Well, it comes from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center with our meteorologist, Kevin Snyder. Scattered showers and thunderstorms for the afternoon. Otherwise, partial sunshine throughout the day today with a high getting up to 82. Then for tonight, it will be mainly clear, though patchy fog will develop after midnight in the suburbs with a low tonight of 64. I'm Kevin Snyder on AM560, The Answer. 72 O'Hare, 72 Lakefront, 65 Aurora. And your next news update is at 530. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy starts now on AM560, The Answer. Don't forget that you can watch Chicago's Morning Answer on the Income Store live video stream every morning at 560theanswer.com. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. So President Trump calls on Jeff Sessions and receives no answer. The call to stop the ridged wig 
rigged witch hunt right now before it continues to stain our country any further. Bob Mueller is totally conflicted and his 17 angry Democrats that are doing his dirty work are a disgrace to USA, exclamation point. Exclamation point. And, of course, this uh, tweet set off a bit of a firestorm yesterday with the Democrats claiming this is prima facie evidence of obstruction. This against the backdrop of stories that have come out that the wrangling between Mueller and Trump's legal team continues. Uh, They would like to question President Trump both orally and in written form on the matter of the topic area of obstruction of justice. Well, I mean, you have to ask, is he obstructing or is he fighting back? That's what Sarah Sanders said. He's not. There's no obstruction because Trump's tweets aren't official statements or are they? Doesn't matter if they're official statements or not. Jonathan Turley makes the point. It's this isn't an obstruction. T- tweets are not obstruction of justice. Well, uh, that's what the left is claiming because well, the left is wrong again. Well, right. I mean, they the the point is that um, get it out there early. Come subjects, on. even targets, do not surrender their First Amendment rights. Well, Jeff Sessions, he was in. Where was he? He was in some southern state yesterday, and he was joking. <coughs> Excuse me. He was having fun with this. Stand by. Stand by. And I think most of it is about. And that's not it. Maybe this one. People are complaining about us coming there. No, that's not it either. He used the word should. He didn't use the word must. He didn't direct him to do it. And he's not going to direct him to do it. That's his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, last night. Here's Jeff Sessions. He can send out orders pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> if you don't, and he's serious about it. We salute. Did you understand that? Uh, sort of. Um, the question then is, uh, now a- answer this question both substantively and politically, because you may, there may be different answers. Should Jeff Sessions accede to President Trump's suggestion and fire Bob Mueller at this stage? Should Jeff Sessions uh, violate his recusal, fire Bob Mueller, or direct Rod Rosenstein to do it, in which case Rod Rosenstein would probably have to be fired too because I suggest he wouldn't go along with it. And you have this uh, daisy chain that is set off by uh, any such action in furtherance of the president's tweet. Should he do it? 312-642-5600, turnkey.pro answer line, 64636DA, turnkey.pro text line. He should because there's nothing there. Paul Manafort trial has nothing to do with Russian collusion or President Trump. It's about tax evasion and bank fraud. That's what that is about. They haven't even mentioned in two days of the trial, besides the ostrich jacket that they've mentioned and his lavish spending, the name Trump hasn't even come up once. And then there's Michael Flynn. And then there's Michael Cohen. So the list goes on and on with people uh, who are associates of Trump's and have nothing to do with Russian collusion. Well, Paul Manafort being tried for crimes other than those related to any Russian criminal conspiracy doesn't mean necessarily, we don't know, it doesn't mean necessarily that there's no connection there. Uh, remember, we've talked to Andy McCarthy and others that suggest this is you know, the ultimate squeeze play is, is continuing with this prosecution, Manafort facing effectively a life sentence, potentially, under the sentencing guidelines for the crimes with which he is charged, and we'll see how it plays out. And, of course, that's what Democrats and even some Republicans are going to say. Let it play out. Don't interrupt the investigation. If there is uh, nothing to be concerned about, then just go on about your day. And, frankly, um, the more that Bob Mueller flails, the the, the less – or I should say the more the time goes on with no evidence produced in furtherance of the claims that the likes of Adam Schiff or Dick Durbin are want to make, well, that just benefits you as it diminishes Mueller's credibility. So why be so obsessed about it? Other than rhetorically as sort of a, a way to convey how unserious the Democrats are, way to challenge some of what they're saying. But otherwise, are you stepping on the good news being produced by the administration, like, for example, the economy's performance, by obsessing about this, much less suggesting something that would immediately dominate the news and, frankly, the news from now at least until the midterms. Robert Mueller has a counteroffer. 
yesterday, late afternoon, he said that he'd offer to reduce the number of obstruction-related questions, but the caveat is he wants to address President Trump in person and not in written answers. Yeah, so the, the, the negotiation goes back and forth over the same topic area. But would you ever sit down with Robert Mueller uh, if you didn't have to? Uh, no, I wouldn't advise Trump to do that. Yeah, because I don't know if he could control himself. Um, the, but but going back to whether this should whether session should uh, end it <laughs> should end it or Trump pull the plug. There's, there's there's Trump even suggesting it, and then there's actual movement and furtherance of it. Um, I, I think it would be politically unbelievably damaging. Uh, so you can make this sub this way. I said separate the substance, you know, in a vacuum. Does Trump have a point that uh, this rigged witch hunt, as he calls it, should come to a conclusion in the not too distant future? Some reasonable point. Yeah, he does. There's no evidence that's been produced, and I mean, even the likes of Juan Williams will concede that. But we don't know what we don't know in terms of all the machinations behind the scenes, what's not being made public, what the special investigative uh, special investigator and his team are doing. But so substantively, there's a case to make. Politically, I don't see the case at all. I don't see this as helpful at all. The one thing that Trump could do, and he should be challenged to do, maybe should be advised to do, is something that's been suggested by Andy McCarthy, by the Wall Street Journal editorial board, by a number of, from a number of quarters, including ours, it's declassify some of these documents. Declassify, you know, the the look what happened when you, we, the public, got a, at least a redacted version of the FISA application that had yeah. been submitted to surveil Carter Page. That was an easy beach read. Yeah, well, it also served sure. to make the president's case to further call into question the FBI and the DOJ, it, particularly against the backdrop of Carter Page still not being charged with anything. Again, pending matter. Everything's a pending matter. It seems to me that there's that would be so much more productive is to declassify and release documents in these partic particular topic areas that would further inform the public, ostensibly, further call into question what the Democrats are saying, what DOJ, FBI, under President Obama did, what the Mueller team is doing. That's such a better play than you know calling on your attorney general through Twitter to violate his recusal and start firing people and create a firestorm at a, a real firestorm, not just a one-day rhetorical one on cable news channels, a real firestorm at Department of Justice and guarantee your impeachment if Democrats take the House, oh, yeah. which you would be acting in furtherance of with the termination of Mueller prior to hit the completion of his investigation. Politically, I just don't see it making any sense, so I don't see the utility of Trump's tweet yesterday. It's what Chicago is talking about. It's Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy on AM560, The Answer. Coming up, new details on that royal heist. they still part of our culture and our heritage. And how they did it was straight out of a script of an action film. But first, here's your forecast. Today, partly sunny, a shower, a thunderstorm around this afternoon, a high of 82 degrees. Mainly clear tonight, a low of 64 and for Friday, mostly sunny, a gorgeous day, 82 degrees. Let's get into the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Here is Jim Telemonte. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Dan. Inbound statement said we're now seeing delays. Cicero to Pulaski, it's 36 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. Up on Fonda 34. Inbound Ryan, got a two-minute delay as well. From 18th into the Burn Circle. Outbound, the on-ramp 87th is closed till 6. We've got three right lanes closed outbound. Starting at 83rd. At Bishop Ford, two minute delay, Cottage Grove to the merge. The other expressways and tollways are okay for now. Again, Lollapalooza starts today. Major street closures, you know, major traffic downtown and on public transit. I'm Jim Talamonte in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Oh, it's coming. Oh, yes, it's already August, and this month school starts for a number of suburban public schools. And if you weren't happy with the public school, and things are changing in the public schools, don't you know? Uh, why don't you make a change and consider private school? 
You can do it for half the price of regular tuition, thanks to our good friends at HalfPriceSchools.com, where you can find tuition vouchers for a full year at half off the normal price. There's no catch. Go to the site, HalfPriceSchools.com. You can see Emanuel Lutheran School in Palatine. There's still openings there. Daystar School in Chicago. Christian Liberty Academy in Arlington Heights. The list goes on and on, but don't delay. School will be starting in a matter of weeks. So visit HalfPriceSchools.com today. HalfPriceSchools.com. At ACE, we believe there's nothing better than helping kids. That's why we've been proud to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals for over 25 years. This Friday through Sunday, get our five-gallon bucket and 20% off almost anything that fits inside when you donate $5 to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. And like ACE, CMN Hospitals are local, so the money you donate helps kids near you. ACE is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Offer valid at participating stores on regular price merchandise only. Additional conditions and exclusions apply. See store for details. On the streets of Miami, speed is the law. So when a corn dog goes after the wrong girl, oh, heartburn. one man will bring her Tums Ultra Strength. I'm on my way. Don't get wrecked by heartburn. Nothing works faster than Tums. Your mustard's fast, but my Tums are faster. Oh. And with Tums on the go rules, it's never been easier to leave heartburn behind. You did it. Yeah. You gonna finish that corn dog? Tums Ultra Strength, available in a store near you. The road courses like Watkins Glen have gotten to be some of the most physical, aggressive Morning, racing that we see all year. Let's do it here at the Glen. Watkins Glen falls into the category of being really, really fast. That track takes a lot of driver skill to get around. It's always really fun for the fans. Kind of seems like we just crash each other. The road course at Watkins Glen, Sunday, 3 Eastern, only on NBC. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. But not with ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology actively invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. Try ZipRecruiter now for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hey guys, Ken here from the Business Accelerator podcast, Today's Growth. If you had to choose a vehicle to take you up the rocky side of a mountain, would you choose a Ferrari or a Jeep? The Ferrari's faster, cooler, maybe even sexier, but if you have to get to the top, the Jeep's a better bet. I think we can agree getting to the top is not about the driver, it's the vehicle. Have you noticed people often pick their financial vehicle like they pick their cars? Washington Post shared that only one out of four people choose a job that uses their college degree. Why? Simple. Something more immediate, maybe cooler, maybe even sexier came along first. Shouldn't the main deciding factors for revenue generation be production or output? Should the cool factor have any weight in choosing someone's income? If getting to the top of the financial mountain is mission critical for you, why not add a few Jeeps to your garage? Could your household or business use an additional revenue model that makes it to the top every time? If so, you have to see the Jeeps lined up at IncomeStore.com. That's IncomeStore.com. AM560, The Answer. I'm sure you're up to date on this breaking news story, Dan. Did you sleep last night? Could you, knowing that the Swedish crown is gone? I hope Stefan Edberg has an alibi. Well, the Swedish royal family, uh, a lot of pain this morning. So are the people of Sweden because not only are the queen's crowns gone and this ode. You know what the ode is? I didn't know what an ode was until I, the ode, the staff, you know. Scepter. Th- that thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, unbelievable heist. They took these items from a 900-year-old church. There was a motorboat, open canvas motorboat. That's an open-air motorboat parked right outside. They steal the crown and the ode, get in the motorboat, speed away. They're looking that for them by land, sea, and air. And here's one of the eyewitnesses. Or is he a suspect? Hmm. We were having lunch just uh, over there. And uh, uh, one of my friends, she saw two people running. A uh, man from this direction and a man from that direction. Mm-hmm. And they, we yeah. could see, I saw the boat was there, a the white little yeah. boat with an outboard motor on the back. The two men hurriedly jumped on board and it sped off in that direction over that way. And we then contacted the police and told them, wow. and they told us that uh, they had taken something from the cathedral. I, I knew immediately that they were burglars mm-hmm. because of the way they were behaving. Mm-hmm. 
the I fact that they met like that and the boat was mm -hmm. waiting and the way that it moved away, it was obvious to me that they were burglars. So that's why I said, call the police. That's call the police. It's riveting. It's like a scene from the Thomas Crown Affair. Yeah. I don't think that guy, had the, that guy barely had the energy to get his story out, much less actually conduct the heist. Well, uh, there li anyone with information needs to call police. Everybody's so lethargic in no, Sweden because they're just they're, contemplative. You know, they're just you no, know, they're it's welfare a beautiful state. summer day. The wards of the state. Mm. I wonder if it's the group uh, with which I used to be affiliated. It's a, an, a libertarian rabble rousing group in Stockholm, Frihetsfronten. A oh, Frihetsfronten. That's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> that would be bad if it turned out to be a group Freedom you front. have been associ associated with. That's why I bartended. That's the group I, oh, I that's right. supported with my bartending skills at an underground rave. <laughs> Back when back that when that word <laughs> was appropriate, they say one of the uh, suspects rode his bike to of the scene. Of so course, he then of took the jewels and then got uh, in the motorboat. Of boat. course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> of course he rode his bike. I blame Monica Sorensen. <laughs> Sweet. They showed the bike and it had a little basket yes, on front and a bell. <laughs> yeah. As you. long as it was such a nice bicycle. As long as Bjorn that? Borg somehow is involved, <laughs> that's the important thing. They drove away in a Volvo. Uh, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Uh, other Swedish crime capers. Uh, but uh, also, uh, Nick Sauer, we uh, oh. we remember Nick Sauer, <laughs> former state representative from Lake County. A story broke yesterday about uh, him and his creepy catfishing. Well, that did him in quickly. It happened right after our show. We'll talk about it at 538. And later, Elk Grove Village is going to be the sponsor of a college football Bowl game. Unbelievable. All the details coming up. But first, let's get into the newsroom. Here's Mike Scott. 72. Very hot and sticky today and warmth coming for the weekend. Special counsel Robert Mueller will limit the number of questions his investigators asked President Trump. Washington Post reporting in a letter Mueller sent on Monday. He apparently offered to reduce by half the number of questions prosecutors could ask the president. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says the president is not trying to obstruct justice, but he is fighting back. There's a reason that the president's angry, and frankly, most of America is angry as well, and there's no reason he shouldn't be able to voice that opinion. Reporters pressing Sanders yesterday on a presidential tweet they called on Attorney General Jeff Sessions to end the Russia investigation. Facebook's chief of security is stepping down, Alex Stamos announcing he's leaving the company to take a job at Stanford. TechCrunch says Stamos had disagreements with Facebook on how to respond to state-sponsored disinformation seeded by, according to some intelligence experts, Russian officials. Vice President Mike Pence is honoring the remains of American troops killed in the Korean War that have returned from North Korea. Some have called the Korean War the Forgotten War. But today, we prove these heroes were never forgotten. Our boys are coming home. In a speech yesterday, Pence adding that his father was a Korean War vet and believed the true heroes of war were those who did not have a chance to come home. Wells Fargo will not admit any liability, but will pay a nearly $2.1 billion fine. The Justice Department uh, announcing the agreement yesterday, the government claiming the bank knew income information was incorrect on residential mortgage loans it originated and then sold. Anti-violence protesters are planning to shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive and streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon. March expected to uh, begin around 4 p.m. on Lakeshore Drive near Diversity before heading into Wrigleyville. Willie Wilson denying new allegations that he's trying to buy the vote. In a bid to become mayor of Chicago, the businessman discussed the fresh accusations yesterday while handing out more than $100,000 to Cook County residents. Today is not about political for me. You know, this is a day for trying to help, you know, and that's exactly what I'm, what I'm doing. Chicago sports Cole Hamels allowed one earned run and struck out nine as the uh, Cubs rolled past the Pirates 9-2. Royals drub the White Sox 10-5. The news is a service of the Positive Coaching Alliance. Got issues with youth or high school sports? Positive Coaching Alliance can help. PCA, a national nonprofit, offers more than 1,000 free online resources for youth and high school sports. Coaches, parents, administrators, visit 
PCADevZone.org. 534 is our time. We'll have a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. Mike Gallagher wants an end to the Russia investigation. Asking about the Mueller investigation, he wants it over with. Rudy Giuliani was quoted as saying that the president's attitude is enough already. Somebody asked Giuliani, a reporter, oh, is he going to fire Mueller? No, he doesn't want to fire Mueller. He wants it to be over with. Get Get it over over with. with. There's no collusion. Give it up. The Mike Gallagher Show, weekdays at 9, right before Dennis Prager at 11 on AM 560. The answer. The power to save is in your hands. Snapshot from Progressive rewards your safe driving with discounts. Find out more at Progressive.com. A storm is on the horizon, and you need to keep the lights on no matter what. Your business relies on the power being on 24-7. It's the lifeblood of your data and computer systems. Weather-related outages from the power company are not acceptable. Your need for a source of power that's reliable 24-7, along with round-the-clock service that can dispatch technicians to your site immediately, is mission critical. Your business needs Charles Equipment Energy Systems on speed dial. These are the big boys, not residential or solar, but reliable industrial generators for emergency backup or events. When you need more than a 100-foot extension cord plugged into a small engine generator, call Charles Equipment Energy Systems. They keep the lights on with rental generators for job sites or power outages. The storm season is here. Plan ahead. Call now to prepare generators for sudden damage and potential power outages. Call 630 834 6000. That's 630-834-6000 or charlesequipment.com. charlesequipment.com. 536. Let's get an update on the roads in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Here's Jim Talamonte. Thanks, Mike. Ian and Stacanity look good right now. Eisenhower inbound, heavy First Avenue to Desplaines Avenue. 30 minutes, 390 to downtown. Stevenson delay started Harlem, 38 minutes, 3.55 to Lakeshore Drive. Ryan, 22 minutes, 95 to downtown. Bishop Ford, 26 minutes, 89 to Ford Merge. Mike mentioned that planned protest on the north side this afternoon. We have Lollapalooza starting this morning. In addition to the existing street closures, Michigan Avenue will have restrictions from 1.30 this afternoon till midnight. No vehicles large larger than a cargo van will be allowed, and Michigan will close entirely Wacker Roosevelt, 930 to 1130 p.m. Traffic service of unbound.org. There's a girl in El Salvador who dreams of becoming an engineer, an elder in Uganda who dreams of having a community to call his own. No two dreams are the same, but one person achieved theirs at unbound.org. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM560. Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center, partly sunny. We may have a shower or thunderstorm around, a high of 82, clear and 64 overnight. Oh, it heats up for the weekend, 93 Saturday, 92 on Sunday, currently 72 at O'Hare. Next news coming up at 6. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. On AM560, The Answer. Make sure to check out the Income Store live video stream of today's show right now at 560theanswer.com. Hey, Joe Walsh here. The Republicans control all of Washington, D.C. When was the last time the Republicans actually cut government spending? We'll answer that when Freedom returns at 5. Good morning, Dan and Amy. So uh, Sarah Sanders was asked yesterday about the treatment that Jim Acosta at CNN got at the Trump rally in Tampa the other day. Uh, Was it wrong? Was it wrong to pick on poor defenseless Jim Acosta? Would the president like to denounce those who callously said CNN sucks? And no broadcaster was broadcasting state secrets. They were trying to do stand-ups at a public rally, and you had people trying to yell over them, preventing them from doing their jobs, and yelling that their network sucks on live TV. Does the White House support that or not? While we certainly support freedom of the press, we also support freedom of speech, uh, and we think that those things go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Eric Bowling was on Newsmax TV. He looked wonderful, by the way, and I was so glad to see him and hear his voice. He said, Jim, he said, CNN doesn't blank, but Jim Acosta does as a reporter. 
Wow, that's such a powerful distinction. It is a difference. Uh huh. Um, th- there are some solid reporters at CNN. I know you don't think so, but you. I think you're kind of warming what? up to Gloria Vanderbilt's son, um, and Anderson Cooper. Well, so who are they? Uh, Anderson Cooper, mm-hmm. Randy, the woman that was here that did the interview when we were here, and I can't remember her <laughs> last name. Wow, it's pow- <laughs> this is, this is a great example. Randy, somebody who works at Randy. CNN. Randy. You she's know She's really Randy. holding up the flag there. You've met Randy. Yeah. She's What's Randy's she's last fine. name? She's fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they have an opinion. They have an agenda, just like Fox News has an opinion and has an agenda. So I, I don't want CNN to go away because I want to he- know what the left is thinking and what they're saying. I cannot stomach MSNBC. I can't watch it. It's CN- unwatchable. So I watch CNN. Well, CNN's existence or non-existence is a market-driven issue their ability to, you know, make a profit, things they otherwise decry when other people do the same. So I'm not exactly sure why we're talking about CNN going away or not going away. What does that have to do with Trump? Well, no, you're asking if Jim Acosta, you said CNN sucks. And I don't feel like CNN sucks. I don't think, I think, and I don't think Jim Acosta sucks, but other people do, and that's their opinion. Right. So what, uh, what does that have to do with CNN going away? No, I'm, I'm saying I don't want them to go away. They're not going away. Well, right. Who's suggesting they go away? They're, you're having well, I, don't, I think Trump would be happy if they went well, away. Well, a lot of people would be happy if they go away. Nobody's acting in furtherance of it other than just not tuning in. And, m- and most of America is not doing that, obviously. Um, but this is the whole kind of conflation of all kinds of issues. I have an opinion based on uh, this mountain of evidence about the professionalism, uh, competence, fair play of these particular individuals of this particular network, MSNBC, CNN. You could make the case uh, alternatively against at least some on Fox. Uh, So what is what is having an opinion, even if you're a politician, even if you're president of the United States, how does that become synonymous with is going away? It's hysterical. What is that? Nobody suggested anything of the sort other than, as I said before, their ability to keep the lights on through their ability to make a profit and pay the exorbitant salaries of the Jim Acostas and the Wolf Blitzers and the Anderson Coopers and the Jim Acosta and, 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 and the rest of them. So, so it's like the rallying to the defense. And by the way, um, the interesting thing about uh, Jim Acosta, who tweeted out just a sample of the sad scene we faced at the Trump rally in Tampa, I'm worried that the hostility whipped up by by Trump and some of the conservative media will result in somebody getting hurt. We shouldn't treat our fellow Americans this way. The press is not the people's enemy. Blah, blah, blah. Namby, pamby, pablum from Jim Acosta. This is reporting? This is reporting? He's and just describing the scene. Uh, his description. Journalism 101. His description uh, of what oh, is this is, dis- is this describing the scene? I'm very worried that the hostility whipped up by Trump and some of the conservative media will result in... So is that describing the scene? Is that being a scrivener of events on the ground? No, he's describing his feelings, which is something you shouldn't do, but then CNN, that's where they mess up because they have reporters who then sometimes act like consultants and analysts, and it, there's a gray area that they cross. Either you're a reporter, you just report the fact, and you get both sides of the story, or sometimes a third side of a story, or you're a commentator. I don't care what you do. I just want everybody to call it what it is. Stop pretending some the, the two plus two is not four. Stop pretending that this is reporting as opposed to advocacy for a particular point of view in a particular party and uh, antagonism towards a particular person and a particular party. I don't care what you do. So report however you want to report. Talk about your feelings. Indulge your feelings all you want, 24-7 on CNN if you want. But don't pretend it's something it's not. And Acosta, you know, selects the uh, harsh treatment he received so that, you know, people on, in the Twitterverse can rally to his defense. Oh, poor Jim Acosta and all that he had to face reporting from Tampa. Yeah, and he, you know, there's more he posts of people coming up to him and say, you lie, you know not coming up to him because he's on a dais and they're behind a a, a fencing, basically. So how how much he was so so threatened. And, you know, one woman gives him the finger. Oh, heavens. Oh, my gosh. Oh. 
I hope it was the index finger. Yeah, you're number one. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then, you know, then you have celebrities and uh, others. Trump plus white trash making America effing lame. Is this uh, the civility we're generating? I fear for the safety of journalists, for the American people being manipulated by Trump. Yeah. The scene looks like a modern-day Ku Klux Klan rally. Well, there, it was the Blacks for Trump's group that was behind Jim Acosta. Yeah, not, n- n- not this. Oh, not in that. Not yeah. only. He was there for a long time. Um, yeah. I mean, so uh, the deplorables as they are, right? Well, they are shou- shouting CNN sucks. That's not a lot of civility on the Republican side. So? So then we can't rip on the Democrats when they do it and they lower their level of civility. I mean, we're both doing it. That's the ugliness of politics lately. Yeah, I know. So It is fun to watch sometimes, but it's kind of getting old. The, the issue is um, false civility, the veneer of civility that the left calls for and doesn't practice. So people want to yell CNN sucks at a rally? I don't care. People want to yell Trump sucks at a rally? I don't care. Civility as, like, the highest order. Eh. It's a street fight. Mike in Bolingbrook, if you have something to say, you hey, can say Dan, it out loud. First of all, said, you are okay. spot on today. You, you're on your game. Everything you've been saying is awesome. Uh, the comparison with this uh, CNN little flower with that woman from uh, Fox, uh, McLaughlin or something, Martha McClellan. Martha McClellan. You know, she, McCallum. she physically, she, w- she was physically touched. I mean, I saw the video of that. I mean, where was the left when they were talking, you know, when this would happen? I don't know if you recall that. And then that other, you know, POS that uh, is on another station that said something about if you put all of them together, you'll have a full set of teeth. Yeah. About the other night, you yeah. hear about that. I mean, that it, it's just getting over the top, and it's, you know, the left is whining about things that they pay no attention to when it doesn't happen to them. I'll uh, hang up and listen. Yeah, thanks for coming. I mean, well, Andrea Mitchell, the grand dame of the D.C. press corps. She's the matriarch, yeah. 40 years and strong. Trump is Stalin. Is that civil? Talk. Is comparison, yeah, well, it is, but is uh, comparisons to Hitler and Stalin and calling people Nazis, if you say it in a room temperature uh, uh, tone of voice, like Dick Durbin does, does that make it civil because it's not, not you're not yelling? Shout it at, no. You're not chanting? Wayne in Bourbon A. Yes, I just want to say that I am sick and tired of these Democrats running our country down. They want to talk about Nazis. Maybe Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin should look in the mirror, along with Michael Madigan and the rest of these idiots we got running our state. I wish the people of Illinois would wake up and see the damage that these people have done and continue to do and going to continue to do until they vote them out of office. And I wish they would wake up and do that in November, please. Thank you very much. Thanks, Wayne. No, they're not Nazis. Let's not do that. You know, Dick Turbin, Mike Madigan, not Nazis. It's like, don't do the Hitler comparisons. Don't do the Stalin comparisons. Hitler has no comparison, except maybe Stalin, but not to these modern-day run-of-the-mill political hacks that are mostly interested in personal aggrandizement and um, net worth enhancement during their time in office. Uh, here's another example. Welcome Sarah Young to the New York Times editorial board, or Sarah, Sarah Jong. Okay. Name assassinator. Yeah. Um, here's some of Sarah Jong's, I, I think I'm pronouncing her name right. Her, here's some of her tweets. White men are bull jives, except she doesn't say bull jives. No one cares about women. You can threaten anyone on the Internet except cops. Mm-hmm. I dare you to get on Wikipedia and play, quote, things white people can definitely take credit for. It's really hard. New York Times editorial board member. Ouch. Oh, man, it's just kind of sick how much joy I get out of being cruel to old white men. 
Are white people genetically predisposed to burn faster in the sun, thus logically being only fit to live underground like groveling goblins? Mm. Hashtag cancel white people. That's no lady. I just realized why I can't stand watching Breaking Bad or Battlestar Galactica. No, this is a bridge too far. The premise of both is just white people being miserable. I mean, you can uh, you can attack white people. Attacking Breaking Bad and Battlestar Galactica is just that's just mean. Uh, Dumas effing white people marking up, uh, marking up the internet with their opinions like dogs urinating on fire hydrants. Yeah. New York Times editorial board member. Civility. Elevating the level of discourse. Uh-huh. Okay. Grant in Rockford. Good morning, you two. Jim Acosta loves this attention he gets from Trump. Without this attention, Jim Acosta would be the no-name he deserves to be. And as far as civility goes, ask Steve Scalise how well that works. You know, I don't I don't think anybody from the left has been harmed, whereas you go on Breitbart, there's a hundred different examples of violence against the right. So have a good day, guys. Thanks for the call, Grant. Um, yes, uh, Randy and Elkhorn. Yeah, since, uh, since when does every news story have the media as part of the story? You know what I'm saying? Like, whenever there's a story, the media is part of that story as opposed to just the story itself. Yeah, thanks for the call, Randy. I mean, there's no, there's no question. It's they're, they're in love with themselves. They love to obsess about themselves and talk about themselves. No, there's no question that Trump has the cult, uh, is is elevated Jim Acosta's career. Nobody, I mean, it's a, people and, in Chicago knew who he was maybe because of DBM and CNN as a network. Yeah. Um, you know, you think Zucker wants Trump to go away? Oh, heck no. Best thing that ever happened to him. Ratings gold. Uh, speaking of um, civility from the left, actual violence. Massachusetts woman is accused of intentionally driving into a man's car Monday after being enraged by his Trump bumper sticker. <laughs> the Another version of why Dan Prop is single. Yeah. That's, uh, Was she, is she single looking to mingle? She's facing uh, charges of vandalizing property, leaving the scene of a hit and run. Well, what does she look like? Let me see her mugshot. Uh, I don't, don't have the mugshot handy. Or I'm gonna look it up. Uh, yeah. Massachusetts mama. <laughs> she said, you voted for Trump. I said yes. And then she called me a bunch a racist and a bunch of cuss words after she hit me with her car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, hey, uh, you know, dare anyone accuse the left of being unhinged or uncivil, elevating the level of discourse. You've made the switch, and it feels so good. You've switched to Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. That's Dot. She's here to greet me after a long day. She's the only one who wants to be near me when I'm sick. She's my best friend. Thanks to folks like South Suburban Humane Society, Dot went from living on the street to a dog that wears clothes. Yep, I'm that guy. So how did I get so lucky? Before I met Dot, I spent time at South Suburban. Giving to a nonprofit isn't always about giving money or donating food and supplies, although that's appreciated too. South Suburban Pets just want your love. We encourage you to come by the facility, take a dog for a walk, play with Dot's cat friends, or even foster a pet to keep your flexibility. If you're interested in how you can volunteer or donate, visit them at southsuburbanhumane.org. That's right, Dot. South Suburban is a 501c3, which means all donations are tax deductible for individuals and businesses. Text DONATE to 708-866-0065 or visit southsuburbanhumane.org. South Suburban Humane Society, creating a better world for pets and their people. How's that New Year's resolution coming that you swore you'd stick to? You know, the one to get fit? I know, I know. Well, it's never too late to restart or set a new fitness goal. Right Fit, Chicagoland's premier inclusive community gym, believes your goals are their goals. Right Fit focuses on you and has programs specifically designed for post-rehab adults, seniors, high school and college athletes, special needs children, and firefighters. Each fitness plan is designed for you to reach your fitness goals. That's why Right Fit only employs college-educated, certified, and experienced training specialists. Visit 
visit one of RightFit's three clean and welcoming locations in Chicagoland, Willowbrook, LaGrange, and Orland Park. Or visit right-fit.com to learn how they can come to your home. RightFit cares about educating and motivating you to get back on track and reach your goals free of pain and frustration. For a limited time, get a free fitness and health assessment followed by a free 60-minute training session. Book an appointment today at right-fit.com. Your fitness goals are their fitness goals. Right-fit.com. When a tornado rips through Kansas, Dorothy Gale and her dog Toto are whisked away to the magical land of Oz. They follow the yellow brick road toward the Emerald City to meet the Wizard of Oz, a timeless classic now playing at the Palace Theater in the Wisconsin Dells. The Palace Theater is a marvelous time for the entire family and will build extraordinary memories year-round. Broadway musicals, theater classics, and special tribute artist performances dot the calendar. For more information, visit dellspalace.com. Coming up at the Palace Theater, this is Tom Jones, The Tribute, August 31st and September 1st. Staying Alive, a Bee Gees tribute, one night only, Thursday, September 6th. And then it's John Denver tribute artist, Ted Vigil, September 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's the Palace Theater Concert Series in the Wisconsin Dells. For more information, visit dellspalace.com. If you feel like you could get more use out of your smartphone and tablet, don't feel alone. It's hard to keep up with ever-changing technology. Now there's an easy way for anyone to master the latest smartphone and tablet. User manuals and how-to guides made for beginners from beginnermanuals.com. Guidebooks that are made for the beginner and approved and recommended by over 100 senior associations in the United States. They teach all the basics with high-quality illustrations and step-by-step step instructions for all the fundamental and important tasks on your smartphone or tablet. These easy to understand guides are just 100 pages long. In just one sitting, you'll be able to use your device completely, confidently, and easily. Beginnermanuals.com has manuals for both Apple and Android devices, including the iPhone, iPad, and Galaxy. Go to Beginnermanuals.com and for a limited time, get 20% off and free shipping. That's Beginnermanuals.com for 20% off and free shipping. 557. Let's get an update on the roads this early morning. And uh, on the rails as well, we hear in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center, Jim Talamonte. Mike, we have some residual delays on the CTA Blue Line this morning after some signal issues. The trains are getting back on schedule right now. But uh, there were some folks standing on platforms for a little bit. And those delays are mainly in the area between Belmont and California. The Eden's Expressway looks good. Kennedy inbound. Scattered delays from 190 and Central. 23 minutes, so here to downtown. I found fine at 20. But Eisenhower heavy starting around Mannheim. 35 minutes, 390 to downtown. Stevenson, 42 minutes, 355 to the drive. Ryan is 25 minutes, 95 to downtown. Fisher Ford, 27 minutes, 894 to merge. Delays on the northbound Tri-State. Reagan Tillway, the O'Hare Oasis. Northbound Veterans Memorial, Butterfield, Roosevelt. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues after a full update from Fox News and your official Chicagoland weather forecast. From the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center, here's our meteorologist, Kevin Snyder. Today, partly sunny with a shower or a thunderstorm around high 82, mainly clear night, low 64. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, high 83, mainly clear night, low 67. Hot day Saturday with sunshine and patchy clouds, high 92. I'm Kevin Snyder for AM560, The Answer. 72 at O'Hare, 72 along the lakefront. The news is a service of the Positive Coaching Alliance. If you've got issues with youth or high school sports, Positive Coaching Alliance can help. PCA is a national nonprofit offering more than 1,000 free online resources for youth and high school sports. Parents and students visit PCADevZone.org. 559. Here are the stories we're following this morning on AM560, The Answer. Anti-violence protesters are gearing up to try and shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive and some of the streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon. Doctors in Illinois getting new legal protections to write standing prescriptions for EpiPens. The governor is signing a new law to expand a law that already exists to protect police officers from lawsuits if they use an EpiPen. 
A jail in one western Illinois county is closed until further notice. Jailers in Warren County closed and locked the doors on that jail and transferred all of their inmates. They simply don't have enough guards. Lollapalooza kicks off today in Chicago. Cole Hamels makes his Cub debut a winner with a victory over the Pirates. The Royals drub the White Sox. WIND Chicago News Time is 6 o'clock. Hey, thank you to North Korea's leader. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. It came in a tweet after midnight. President Trump crediting him for keeping his word, sending home remains of what he calls our great and beloved missing fallen. That was the ceremony when the 55 flag draped boxes arrived in Hawaii. Today, they are known but to God. But soon we will know their names. Vice President Pence, Diana Brown, San Filippo was there, her father among the Korean War missing. I hope you're back home and can rest in peace in the country you served. Uh, the long process of identification is next. Democrats have a new claim of obstruction of justice against President Trump. That tweet yesterday saying the attorney general should stop the rigged witch hunt, referring to the special counsel's Russia probe. Fox's Rachel Sutherland live in Washington. Dave, the White House says President Trump was expressing an opinion, not issuing an order when he tweeted that Attorney General Jeff Sessions should end the Russia probe. Rudy Giuliani is the president's attorney. He's established a clear sort of practice now that he, he expresses his opinions on Twitter. He used the word should, he didn't use the word must. Meanwhile, sources familiar with the investigation tell Fox News that Special Counsel Robert Mueller has responded to the president's legal team and has agreed to have some questions answered in writing, but he does want some answered orally. Dave. Rachel, the president may put an even tighter squeeze on things made in China, wanting an even bigger tariff than first proposed of $200 billion in more imports. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer saying the administration's looking at a 25% tariff on those goods. That would be on top of the tariffs already imposed on $50 billion worth of Chinese goods already. China's been slapping tariffs on American products in response. That's Fox's Jill Nato. China says the U.S. should correct its attitude. Blackmail will never work. Stock markets around the world are falling. Futures are down on Wall Street. Fox News. Fair and balanced. As press secretary for President Trump, Sean Spicer had a front row seat to history. And in his new book, he reveals details about what really happened behind the scenes during the campaign and the early days of the administration. On Wednesday, August 8th, Sean Spicer is coming to Chicago. Meet Sean Spicer and get a copy of his new book, The Briefing, at the Museum of Broadcast Communications. Tickets are absolutely free. Thanks to healthinsurancementors.com. Get your tickets at 560theanswer.com slash briefing. That's 560theanswer.com slash briefing. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event. And now, while selection is best, it's the best time to buy. With amazing offers across a full lineup of Ford vehicles, now is the time to make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand. Stop by a local Ford store or shop online at buyfordnow.com because there is no better time than right now to get behind the wheel of a new Ford during the Ford Summer Sales Event. The Ford Summer Sales Event is here. Right now, get 0% APR financing for 60 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on the 2018 Echo Sport. Best-selling claim based on 2017 calendar year sales. Not all buyers will qualify for Ford credit financing. 60 months at 1667 per month for 1,000 finance regardless of down payment. For all offers, take new retail delivery from an authorized Ford dealer stock by 831.18. See dealer or go to buyfordnow.com for qualifications and details. Email phishing attacks cost businesses billions annually in real cash, data loss, and brand damage. Phishing emails are hard to detect because the messages appear to be legitimate to unsuspecting employees. Introducing Barracuda Fish Line, a groundbreaking cloud-based solution designed to help employees recognize sophisticated email phishing attacks through interactive training reinforced by continuous simulation. Transform your employees from a liability into a line of defense. Go to barracuda.com pl to learn more. Freak yeah, Jimmy John's. Freak yeah, what if I just needed one sandwich delivered? Freak yeah, we can do that. What about 100 sandwiches? Freak yeah, we can do that. What about 24 sandwiches? Freak yeah, we can do that. 67 sandwiches? Freak yeah, we can do that. You know, 67's a prime number. Freak yeah, a whole number greater than one whose only factors are one in itself, I know. Great. Uh, I'll take one turkey tom, please. Freak yeah, one turkey tom, on the way. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's, freak yeah. 
This hourly segment is brought to you by Grow My Retirement with Bill Geiger of Geiger Wealth. Tune in Saturday afternoons at 2 for Grow My Retirement with Bill Geiger of Geiger Wealth. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, Chicago police are um, readying for the uh, protest uh, up Lakeshore Drive this afternoon. Um, Obviously, uh, the key is uh, the Chicago police officers taking the time to understand the the gender identity (laughs) of every protester so they can address them properly as they march from Lakeshore Drive to Wrigley Field. It's so ridiculous. So the protesters are going to gather in this parking lot near Belmont and Lakeshore Drive, then walk onto Lakeshore Drive and take that up. um, I'm sorry, by Fullerton they're going to get on, take it up to Belmont, then walk west they should go Clark over, and then make a right and end up in front of Wrig- Wrigley Field. They should have lunch at uh, <laughs> at Oven Grinder. <laughs> uh, no, it's the best pizza in the city. Start with lunch, and they're doing this to draw awareness about gun violence and homicides in Chicago. It's an anti-violence protest. Um, first anti-violence protest. In case you didn't hear, when they shut down the Dan Ryan, that cost taxpayers three hundred twenty-three thousand dollars, and it's still climbing. That's how much it will, the bill will be for taxpayers. So here, here they go doing this again. This is your friend, Reverend Lu- Gregory Livingston, who was on our show last week. And the question is, should they be getting arrested? Because I want them arrested. Chicago police, they're in charge of Lakeshore Drive, not Illinois State Police, nobody else. So they have the authority to arrest people who walk onto Lakeshore Drive. 312-642-5600 is our turnkey death pro answer line, 64636 Turnkey Depp Pro text line. This is happening at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Of course, we have Lollapalooza starting. We have a Cubs oh, of course. Pirates game or St. Padres game uh, this evening at Wrigley Field. Yeah. And Al's Beef on. Oh, uh, no. Well, well, no, they. Al's Beef. You've been to Al's Beef, right? I have, yeah. Al's Beef on uh, Clark there. They're hiring extra security guard. I don't want my windows being broken, so I do have security. Just, you know, I plan for the worst, but hope for the best. I assume he means the window's broken by police. No. Otherwise, that would be racist. No, by protesters. Well, you know what I love? Mark Thomas, he owns the alley on Clark Street there, which is right next to my veterinarian. Um, He he doesn't understand, nor do I, I agree with why they are doing this. I guess you get your TV time, but I don't know if you're going to change the world and get the crime to stop, and I think that's the real deal. No, um, Greg Livingston, when, when we spoke with him, concedes he's not going to stop the violence any more than Flager's Dan Ryan shutdown did. Uh, this is to take the issue to a neighborhood that Rahm Emanuel actually cares about uh, and uh, you know, be disruptive in their lives uh, to, uh, I don't know, try and get attention to the plight on the south and west sides of the city. I'm going to have to disagree. I don't think Rahm Emanuel cares about our neighborhood. Rahm Emanuel oh, cares okay. about his block. Right. Rahm Emanuel cares about his house because we have lead in our water, don't you know? And um, we're getting new pipes in. And the first water pipe that's being installed is going right up Ravenswood, right to, oh, my goodness, it's Mayor Emanuel's house. Mm-hmm. And here's Reverend Livingston yesterday trying to say, we're going to flip the script. Woo! People are complaining about us coming there. But we we can flip the script if the residents of Lakeview and Wrigleyville want to come march in Inglewood and Lawndale and Austin. Believe me, we'd love to have them. Yeah. And that's going to make it all better. Let's take all those Blaine Blue Jays and harness that energy together and let's go to the south side and the west side and march. To be a unifying event. No, I mean, go up to the north side today and march with them. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Why not? Because I'm not going to inconvenience people. Hmm. Hardworking Chicagoans who want to go home after work, who want to go relax and possibly enjoy a Cubs game. Oh, yeah. Who uh, want to take their dog to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that because Bunky has a... You have a vet appointment today. At 4.30 right. on Clark and Belmont. So that's what at this Bloom is really Animal. about. No, but they've sent out a bla- an email blast saying, we're probably not going to have parking because we're going to give our parking to authority, uh, to police cars if they need it. And, you know, l- allow yourself extra time to get there. And good luck getting there. Why don't you just walk? 
I'm going to have to walk. Yeah. But my bulldog's sick, and I can't make her walk a mile. Unless Maybe I could get a little red wagon. Why don't you just put her down? Hey. She's, hey. she's going to lose the contest on Hayek anyway, rather I, than have to yeah. suffer that indignity. Put her down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you cancel the vet appointment. It wouldn't be inconvenienced. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Um, Eddie Johnson, Tiny Dancer, I assume, will be marching with these protesters, I, just no. as they endorsed and marched with Fla- Father Flager, right? No, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen. They have not said oh, what they're golly. going to do. All I know is that my friends who are police officers, one was called off of furlough, and now he's getting extra hours, too, by working Lollapalooza. Um, and they're going to have a lot of bike and foot patrol officers there. But just bring a big wagon and when they get onto Lakeshore Drive, arrest them, please, I beg you, please, 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 for their own safety, because I think they will be run over. Well, and if it's really bad, they're going to direct traffic off of Fullerton uh, to head west, and then they can't head up Clark. It's just going to be a disaster. Well, so they're going to have to go around a one-mile area mm-hmm. on Lakeshore Drive. Yeah, it's a real logistical nightmare. No, it is. Well, um, And it's bull jive for <laughs> what, 35 people, maybe more? I don't know how many are expected. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the invites are still out. It seems like the problem is we've already conceded the principle here, right, with the Dan Ryan shutdown. So what are you going to do? Right. How, you do, you, how do you pick and choose? That's right. Remember, you said that, too. While you do the Dan Ryan, what's next? You, uh, I suggested, I thought, O'Hare Airport. They're going to try and shut sure, down one runway. of the runways there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 14 right, 32 left is the one I would select. See? Now you're giving them ideas. Exactly. And we can go right they could, after the game. They could just uh, but remember go up to Kennedy. Protesters did this in uh, 2014. I don't remember what they were protesting, but they arrested. Because I remember we were stuck on Lakeshore Drive just waiting for them to move. And then when they gave us all clear, we could continue. But it was a long yeah. call. And they arrested four people that night. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was a Black Lives Matter march. That's these Clockwork Orange kids are always running around Lakeshore Drive. These little... You Justice know. Warriors, watch out for the used minivan, because I'm coming for you. Ken in Plainfield, you're on Chicago's Morning Answer. Yeah, of course they should be arrested. Oh, by the way, nice skin, Amy. Good intellect, Dan. And if they're not uh, arrested, very much. they should they, they should be uh, let the uh, the people in the cars take the law in their own hands. I mean, if you're not going to enforce the law in oh, one hand, nice. let the people get out and beat the crap out of them for a change. Oh, you know, they don't Ken. belong on the road. I love you know, this. I, I mean, you're okay. spectacular this morning. Thanks you're really for on the it. Call Ken. Yeah, right. So more, I mean, I'm more not arrests. Ex- I just, and I'm not homicidal. I don't have homicidal tendencies, but this gets me so it's good to know. <laughs> mad that I would be tempted to, like, oh, officer, I'm so sorry, my foot slipped. I thought I was hitting the brake. You weren't as mad about the Dan Ryan shutdown. No, because I was out of town that weekend. Right. But this week, this is in my hood now. Got it. No, I was upset about the Dan Ryan. And then also, too, you have Illinois Masonic Hospital. Again, a level one trauma center right there, right off of Belmont. It's so stupid that we have to change our lives and these hardworking business owners on Clark Street, on Belmont, on Addison have to suffer. Yeah. What do you mean? It's right before Cubs game. This is their bread and butter. This is like they get the pregame stuff and the pregame crowd. And the tourists from all over the world, this is when they make their money. Tom, T- They should get Tom Tunney to get up these huh? uh, protesters' butts <laughs> <laughs> every day. Oh, also, too, yeah, but there is no parking. They put up no parking signs all along to accommodate the protesters. So everybody had to move yeah. their cars. Oh, the horrors. On the side streets. Bob in Villa Park. Yeah, you know, out of all the 20,000 shootings and 5,000 murders under uh, Tiny Dancer, how many have actually been solved that would be a deterrent um, to – about committing these things. Why don't all these protesters take all the resources and all their time to help the police solve these murders and actually make a difference? All right. Thanks for the call. About cold case squad is Wait, what we want. Listen to this. I'm sorry. They're, so at 4 o'clock, they're entering Lakeshore Drive in the southbound lanes and then heading north in the southbound lanes and then exiting the Belmont. Yeah, you got to walk oh, into traffic. Oh, you got to really make it off. Yeah. How to walk into traffic. you got to face it. Like, come on. Yeah. I got like a scene from Mission Impossible. They're going to be weaving in and out of traffic. Uh, actually, Bob in Villa Park, though, makes a good point. Not so much, you know, turning these, lay, you know, laymen uh, into cold case investigators, but in terms of uh, presenting, advocating for, gathering intel, providing it to the police, 
witnesses to shootings who won't want to come, who don't want to come forward because, of course, uh, snitches get stitches. Um, but helping police clear some of these cases because the, the clearance rate we know is woefully low. Mur- the murder clearance rate, some it's about twenty percent generally. Some years it's been mm-hmm. recently it's been less than that. So that that's a that's a good point, and so that would be a challenge to some of the folks who live in the neighborhoods that are particularly beset by violence. You know, pr- provide intel and information to the police to help them bring people to justice. Uh, John and Huntley. Yeah, here's my idea. We're missing a, an opportunity. Let's give, let's get Hank Johnson up from Johnson. Atlanta, yeah. the congressman. Have him come up, go to Father Flager's place, do a little talk, and they all march over to Northerly Island and see if they can tip that island over like they were worried about Guam being tipped. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks for the call, John. <laughs> no, not, that not, might be their next not, plan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good. We I I still like the best idea in terms of the protest location. What in the sky? Well, no, wait. What did you suggest? Earlier? Well, uh, Ravinia. Oh, would be great. Oh no, and a soccer field to Winneka and Wilmette. Yeah, or or like a polo match or whatever they do at Trier. It's lacrosse or. Uh, but I think it's that. Uh, could you imagine like during like a Joe Cocker concert up at Ravinia, <laughs> these people running hey. through? Yeah. I love it. That's what Greg Livingston should do. Lift us up where we belong. Yeah, that would be good if they. Is that Kim Carnes doing Joe <laughs> Cocker? <laughs> Joanne at Midway. Uh, I just got a question for you. When they had the Dan Ryan shut down, every TV oh. station had it live coverage. Oh yeah. Does that mean at four o'clock I have to turn off my TV? No, oh, yeah. you can no, still no, no. watch Judge Joe Brown. Oh, well, on the U. But, no, ABC, CBS, NBC, Thanks they're all the call, taking it live at 4 o'clock. But that's, it's perfect because that's normally when they start their news programs. Hmm, I wonder why he planned it for 4. Hmm. Yeah, because he's a sharp hmm. guy. I like it. Media savvy. Yeah. I like I'll my give them that. protest organizers to be media savvy. Uh, Robert in Oak Park. Yeah, real quick. Um, in, Ten years ago, I... I Riding my bike in the city, accidentally got on to Lakeshore Drive. Uh, I got arrested and thrown in Cook County for three days. Wow. With a $250,000 bond put on me. Mm-hmm. What? Did, so, you know, did you have anything on your person? I, I was completely straight and I don't do drugs. So mm-hmm. it, it's, In the prison purse? It, did you, were you, so there were you, you go. dragging so, so a dog? Again, I, no, no, just remember. There. A law, our laws do not apply to everybody. Certain people, Amen, brother. certain ways, other people, other ways. Now, now Robert, that's the way our system works. Do, do, you live in the, do you live in the city? No, I live in Oak Brook. Yeah, okay, well, let me tell you something. We don't need more bike riders in the city, <laughs> all right? My neighborhood hate- is infested <laughs> with these people. Well, if they me finish too, that. Me too. Hey, that's the one thing bike about bridge. bike riders. They don't. Obey by the law. They're like oh, gremlins. Whatever the hell they oh. want to do. Here we go. Here we go. There's, there's the, thanks they're for the call, Robert. They're road warriors. Yeah. No, they're, they're everywhere. In your neighborhood, they are. I was about at Navy Pier yesterday on the Sea Dog. Woof, woof. And um, so the ridiculous. bikers were, I mean, it is it is a bit of a problem. But once you get that bridge finished that they've been working on for 10 years or 12 years now, mm-hmm. once that's finished, it's going to be a whole new world. No, the bypass is great. The bypass, yeah. They yeah. just need to finish it. Uh-huh. Yeah, it but took. back to Lakeshore Drive. Yeah, if you even walk on Lakeshore Drive, you can call. I when I would always call nine one one on people who are walking on Lakeshore Drive. Because you have nothing better to do. No, because I didn't want them to get killed, or I didn't want to have kill them myself. But so I'd call, and they they always you they come, they pick you up. It's a it's a heavy fine, as our last caller just pointed out. It's a big deal. You cannot walk on Lakeshore Drive. Right. You but can't run. You can't do anything on Lakeshore Drive. Don't you know what? Don't even look at it. Okay. Uh, you can put don't, a, don't, don't what about it. biking the drive? Why, why, well, on that day, they, yes, that day you, you, you make a special dispen- You offer a special dispensation of bike riders. This is what it begets. No, the, you, the, you bike broke the seal with bike to riders. Do bike the Does, drum, you broke drive. the seal. Once they get to yeah. ride on Lakeshore Drive, then it's mm-hmm. you know it's a free for all. It's over. It's cats and dogs living together. Every, and Reverend Gregory Livingston, I know his heart's in the right place. I got that, but not. Not now. Not on Lakeshore Drive. On a busy Thursday in the summertime. You think our police resources are, we're not stretched to the gills right now? We've got Lollapalooza and now this. What about arresting anybody who attends Lollapalooza just <laughs> on principle? 
<laughs> I'd be for that. Randy and Elkhorn. Hey, uh, Joe Cocker, is he still dead? Not to me, he's not. Wait, is he dead? Did thanks, he die? Thanks for the call, Randy. <laughs> Who's Joe Cocker? Joe Cocker is uh, immortal, Randy. Well. Fine. Well, uh, ABBA cover bands always play at Ravinia. ABBA cover bands? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that, that could that be good. That draws a crowd. Um, no, seriously, we have to plan their next shutdown. No, yeah, they they, they got to take it to Green Bay Row or somewhere up. It, doesn't like Steely Dan come every August or something? Joe Cocker is dead. What did he do? Yeah, I know. He, I, <laughs> but not to me, he's not. Okay. Chad in, on the south side. Hi, Dan and Amy. This is Chad. Yeah. Hey, I think that those protesters were to uh, get together and chant that they were going to vote Republican, they would get more uh, attention from Ron Emanuel. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Chad. Yeah, they would. Uh. So oh, I can't wait to see how Mayor Emanuel is going to react to this and Superintendent Eddie Johnson. Would you be more sympathetic to the uh, protesters uh, walking against traffic uh, on South Lakeshore Drive to Wrigley Field if they were chanting CNN sucks? <laughs> would that help? Too soon, Dan. Uh, Mike on in Crown Point. Morning, Dan and Amy. This is the, the left with their symbolism over substance. If they really wanted to and were concerned about the violence, go go protest in the violent neighborhoods. They, everybody can tell you exactly where the drug drug guys are, are located. March right in their offices, their their buildings, and tell them get the hell out. Yeah, okay. But they don't want to do that because they they just want to make themselves feel good. Well, they also don't want to do that, uh, Mike, because they don't want to get shot. I think that probably has a lot to do with it. This is all a publicity stunt. Well, yeah. Obviously. Well, and I know he wants to draw national attention to his cause. I understand that. But this is not the right way to do it. Didn't stop it. It didn't change anything after the Dan Ryan was shut down. How many shootings were that weekend? Seven Uh, people uh, were killed. No, of course it's not going to change anything. March isn't going to change anything. And a candlelight vigil, novelty T-shirts. None of that's going to change What about the Mylar balloon, huh? If you get enough of them. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing though, remember this, Greg Livingston and his crew, they're anti tiny dancer. They've well, called for his resignation, yeah. Freddie Johnson's resignation. Flager is a tiny dancer flack. So there's a difference there. Marty in Naperville. Hey guys, good show. Uh, Amy's absolutely right. Has anything at all changed since Father Failure had his last little scam on uh, Lakeshore Drive. Yeah, violence has no, increased. No, it never will. Yeah, thanks for the call, Well, Marty. the only thing that changes, were, it, the taxpayers were billed $323,000 for that, for two hours of work. That's I know it's nothing when you look at the big you know picture, but still, it's wasted funds. It's wasted tax dollars. I don't get it. Maybe send, a, what? send an invoice to St. Sabina. Oh, that's a sweet, great idea. You could. I mean, absolutely within your, their rights to do so. Yeah, but do they have the, you know what I mean, onions down there to do it? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> Why are you busting my onions? They don't have onions at all. Tom and Deer Park. So 300 and some odd thousand dollars yes. of public money used to back the stunt of Father Flager and Mayor Tiny Dancer, which was for gun control. Yeah, Somebody right. paid for the buses, for the T-shirts, the logistics, all the media stuff. That was an anonymous donor. I don't know if it was Michael Blomberg or the Archdiocese or St. Sabina. But basically what, what's happening here is, is that there's a, a public, a, a private agenda of, of the Archdiocese, of Father Flager, of Tiny Dancer. But the public is paying for their speech is because – uh, because of the police protection. So the anonymous donor doesn't pay the police protection. We do, and they're trying to take our rights at the same time. Uh, that's unbelievable. That's a nice twofer, isn't it, Tom? Yes. But good, p- good point. And, Thanks and for the call. And they're catering to them, too. By even They put up those signs yesterday, I saw it, where they're giving them a pathway to have their march. All that section of Belmont, the signs are up, you'll be towed by 330, and then on Clark all the way up to Addison. We like spectacles in this town. You got your... Uh, you got your protest marches. You got your Nick Walenda on a wire from Marina Tower to the Leo Burnett building. That was kind of cool. You got your slut walk. Oh, the slut walk was great this year. We yeah. missed you. 
I mean, Gosh, so you got to come back. Next I week. mean, you need a good spectacle every uh, few weeks in the summer just to keep things interesting in the city. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The Answer. <laughs> Coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer, J.B. Pritzker Health Scare. Oh my gosh, is it come to this? But first, here's your forecast. Today, partly sunny, a shower, a thunderstorm. Oh, maybe around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Let's see. Um, <laughs> that'd be spectacular. Sorry, I'm evil. A high of 82 degrees, 72 right now. Tonight, mainly clear, a low of 64. And tomorrow, sunshine, a high of 82. Let's get into the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Big weekend uh, that's starting early because of Lollapalooza. Here is Jim Telemonte. That's right, Amy and Dan. Lollapalooza starts this morning. She'll have that traffic mess in the downtown area. Of course, that protest on the north side. If you mix some rain, it'll really be something. Well, of course, we'll keep you updated here on AM 560 throughout the day. Right now, the Edens has a two-minute delay inbound. Cicero to the junction. I found it's fine. Kennedy, 26 minutes. O'Hare to downtown. Up on 23. The Ike is a 37-minute drive, 390 to downtown, up on 30. Stevenson, 40 minutes, 355 to the drive. Ryan, 28 minutes, 95th to downtown. We're on Tri-State Heavy from the Reagan to the Lawrence. I'm Jim Talamonte in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Looking to refinance on a new home or refinance your existing mortgage? Then you need to do what I did and call the most honest lender, Team Hockberg. Sally's heard hundreds of Team Hockberg's ads and called them for her mortgage. Wrong. While pumping gas, the nation's largest online lender with the shiny rocket advertisement was running on the pump. So Sally called them for a mortgage. Bad mood. Move. And a bad mood. The lender who loves their rocket quoted Sally at a, a high rate and higher closing costs. So she called Team Hochberg and they explained the lender infatuated with the rocket's uh, ex- exorbitant closing costs. Team Hochberg doesn't have a rocket, but they have lower rates and closing costs than the nation's largest online lender. If you want to work with the best in the business, you should call David Hochberg, Team Hochberg, at 312-751-1333. Team Hochberg, not Tim Hochberg, I can't, words are hard today. Team Hochberg helped me and thousands of AM560 listeners, but they can't help you if you don't call. 312-751-1333. Pearl Mortgage, an equal housing lender, Illinois Residential Mortgage Licensee, 4358, NMLS 19186. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies in a Capsule. I've got uh, enclosing spondylitis, which is a arthritic disease, calcification of the major joints and spine, and I just don't have the pain that I used to have. It's really kind of uh, amazing. Balance of Nature has been an amazing product. Uh, I've recommended it to literally hundreds. I'm a pastor. And I've said, y'all, just try it. Give, it. give it a month. Give it a try. And so hopefully they have. But uh, it's, it's an amazing product. And uh, the neatest thing is when you first open up that bottle and you can smell the fruits and vegetables. I, every time I open one, I just get a big kick out of that. When you call, use discount code CHICAGO. And we'll take 35% off your first preferred set of fruits and veggies and have them shipped to you free. Call 800-246-8751. That's 1-800-246-8751 or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. Looking for a fun summer vacation idea? Charlottesville in Albemarle County, Virginia is a short and easy trip with daily nonstop flights on two airlines from O'Hare. Tour the homes of former presidents Jefferson, Monroe, and Madison. Sip wine at one of the area's 30 plus wineries. Take a hike in Shenandoah National Park dine al fresco at one of the many farm-to-table restaurants or stroll down one of the longest pedestrian malls in the country plan your trip today at visit charlottesville.org columbia college chicago seeks a qualified professional to serve as a tenure track faculty member in the communication department requires a phd degree in education or communication and one academic year experience in the job offered chicago illinois location send a resume to columbia college chicago 624 South Michigan Avenue, Suite 600, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. Attention, Jay Zarzicki. 
At ACE, we believe there's nothing better than helping kids. That's why we've been proud to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals for over 25 years. This Friday through Sunday, get our five-gallon bucket and 20% off almost anything that fits inside when you donate $5 to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. And like ACE, CMN Hospitals are local, so the money you donate helps kids near you. ACE is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Offer valid at participating stores on regular price merchandise only. Additional conditions and exclusions apply. See store for details. On the streets of Miami, speed is the law. So when a corn dog goes after the wrong girl, oh, heartburn. one man will bring her Tums Ultra Strength. I'm on my way. Don't get wrecked by heartburn. Nothing works faster than Tums. Your mustard's fast, but my Tums are faster. Oh. And with Tums on the go rules, it's never been easier to leave heartburn behind. You did it. Yeah. You gonna finish that corn dog? Tums Ultra Strength, available in a store near you. AM 560. The answer. You are so beautiful. Shit. To me. <laughs> I didn't know he was dead. Tribute concert at Ravinia. That's uh, we're encouraging the protesters to interrupt. What's so, I have to know. You have to know what? That tease about J.B. Pritzker health scare. Did have he to choke on the some show. candy? You'll find out. Choke on a chicken sandwich? Did he Janis Joplin himself? What's going on? I'll have it for you. Just don't worry. He's <laughs> fine. Well. As far as we know. Okay. That's coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Also, a uh, retired Kane County Water District employee has banked $3.5 million in oh. pension benefits so far after retiring at age 58. Well, talk a little bit about uh, connecting dots between paying people multi-million dollar pensions and your home being liquidated by the government at, si at 636. And on a very special Dan and Amy, we'll remember the career of Nick Sauer. But first, let's get into the newsroom. Here's Mike Scott. Partly sunny skies, 72 degrees. Security analysts say a new group of hackers has successfully breached electric utility networks across the United States. The hacking group has targeted companies that manage the generation, transmission, or distribution of electricity in the U.S. So far, the hackers have not yet gotten into control systems that power elements of your electric grid. The Democrat Republic of Congo uh, declaring another Ebola outbreak. Health officials say the latest outbreak has killed 20 so far, just days after another 30 died in an epidemic in the northwest of that country. One of the most destructive wildfires in California continues to burn. The car fire near Redding has destroyed over 1,000 homes. On the western flank of the fire, we have a lot of steeper terrain with some big drainages, some heavier fuels, big timber that we have up in that area. So the firefighters will be dealing with that as well. Cal Fire's Lisa Wilkolak says it's burned over 121,000 acres and only 35% contained. Russia is moving to deploy military police on the Golan Heights along Syria's border with Israel. According to Russia's Interfax news agency, eight observation posts will be set up. Forces loyal to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and Russia and Iranian allies are moving closer and closer to the border with Israel. Former Ohio State, uh, former Ohio State assistant Zach Smith uh, has, has placed some pressure on Ohio State football coach Urban Meyer. Meyer now on leave. After abuse claims were filed against his former assistant, OSU took the action yesterday as it investigates a report that Meyer was aware of assault allegations made against Zach Smith by his ex-wife Courtney in 2015. Transportation Security Administration officials are considering no more passenger screenings at more than 150 small and medium-sized airports in the U.S., CNN has obtained documents saying the move to cut screenings at those airports where planes have 60 or fewer seats would save about $115 million annually. An anti-violence protest is set to shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive and some of the streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon. Former Illinois Congressman Mel Reynolds is behind bars for a third time. Reynolds reported to a Chicago federal lockup yesterday to begin serving the remaining four months left on his prison sentence. Cubs roll the Pirates 9-2.
Royals double up the White Sox, 10 to 5. The news is a service of the Positive Coaching Alliance. Got issues with youth or high school sports? Positive Coaching Alliance can help. PCA is a national nonprofit. It offers more than 1,000 free online resources for youth and high school sports. Coaches and administrators visit PCADevZone.org. 634 is our time. We'll have a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. Dennis Prager tries to understand the left's latest outrage. I don't know how they sleep at night since they believe in all of their hysterias on the left. But the latest uh, for the left uh, is straws. Plastic straws. They don't enjoy you having much joy. It is an amazing uh, phenomenon of the ascetic religion of leftism. The Dennis Prager Show. Weekdays at 11, right before Sean Hannity at 2 on AM 560. The answer. Get your truly free credit score and free credit monitoring from Credit Karma. Download the Credit Karma app today. Credit Karma. Get knowing. As a parent, I have no problem making the investment of sending my daughter to a Catholic high school in the Diocese of Joliet because of the unparalleled achievement of its students. On average, students who attend one of the seven Catholic high schools in the diocese have an ACT score of 24, almost three points higher than the ACT average of students who attend an Illinois public school. Also, 99.9% of seniors graduate from high school and 99.6% attend a four-year college or university. Additionally, a recent class of graduating seniors were offered approximately $145 million in scholarships. Most importantly, my daughter will be formed in the image of Christ, so she has the moral foundation to make the right choices based on the teachings of the Catholic Church. Participating Catholic schools in the Diocese of Joliet, in conjunction with the Catholic Education Foundation, are offering transfer grants of $1,500 to elementary school students and $3,000 to high school students who transfer from a public school. Restrictions apply. For more information, go to We Teach More. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter. Signature Bank knows your name and your story. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my business bank. I'm Ryan Siebert, CEO of SG Home Builders and a customer of Signature Bank. Over the last 10 years, my business pivoted multiple times to adjust to the fluctuations in the Chicago real estate market. Signature Bank's partnership with us and their ability to adapt to changes has allowed us to become a leading custom home builder. Signature Bank is a relationship-based business bank right here in Chicago, providing services and advice that address our unique situation, and they serve as a trusted consultant on what works best for my business. Signature Bank helped us build SG Home Builders while we were busy building dream homes for our clients. Signature Bank is looking for their next success story. To learn more about turning your business vision into reality, visit SignatureBank.Bank. Signature Bank, helping local businesses succeed. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 637. Let's get an update on the roads in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Here is Jim Talamonte. Thanks, Mike. The northbound Tri-State Tollway has delays from 75th Street to the Hinsdale Oasis and from the Reagan Tollway to Lawrence. Northbound Veterans Memorial a bit tight, Finley to St. Charles. The other tollways are good. The Aiden's 24 minutes, Lake Cook to Montrose, southbound 20. Kennedy, 28 minutes, so here to downtown, outbound 29. Eisenhower is now 48 minutes, 390 to downtown. 32 from Manheim. How about 34 to 390? Stevenson, 40 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. Ryan, 30 minutes, 90 to 50 downtown. Traffic service of Unbound.org. When you sponsor through Unbound, not only open the door to education for a young person, you empower a family to build a foundation of financial stability, empowerment, and respect. See your contribution grow into opportunity at Unbound.org. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte, AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center, partly sunny. A shower or a thunderstorm will hang around this afternoon, a high of 82. Currently 72. Next news coming up at 7. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. On AM 560, The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by Turnkey IT, giving you the freedom to focus on your business while they handle the technical stuff. Turnkey IT. 
When you've got questions, he always has an answer. It's Sean Hannity. This afternoon at 2, right before Joe Walsh at 5, on AM 560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. And uh, you've seen J.B. Pritzker's, uh, a.k.a. Spalding, his uh, most recent television spot. You see him French kissing a dog. Well, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And I, this was playing in the background. He's got a glandular problem. I was afraid he was going to eat the dog, but uh, he was just kissing the dog because he loves puppies. Uh, yeah, so Spalding, uh, he's our future governor, don't you know? Oh, this is your grandson. Uh, oh, wonderful boy. Nice boy. Right? He's a good boy. I'll tell you. Now I know why tigers eat their young, you know? Uh, he, so just thinking about that uh, relationship with the dog, uh, I want to... Want me to play the ad? I want to pay, make people aware of this story. Uh, okay particularly at the Pritzker camp and the Pritzker family. Dog's lick causes blood infection. Man has limbs amputated. What? <laughs> no, the man had his limbs amputated. Or is that the song the guy was making? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, Greg uh, Mantefell contracted a uh, blood disease. Um because he let he lick he let his dog lick his face. Bacteria in dog saliva, uh, in his dog saliva, uh, was found that ca- that uh, induces sepsis. <gasps> the uh, blood infection spread quickly and resulted in the amputations of both feet. <gasps> Man's best friend, indeed. Well, don't doesn't every dog owner let their dog lick their face? Doug. Maybe. 312-642-5600, Turnkey Dad, Provincial Line, 64636-DA, then a quick comment. I have a friend who, let, like, she literally makes out with her dog. Oh, really? It's, kind of, it's disgusting. You might want to tell your friend that doctors are going to eventually be forced to remove parts of this gentleman's lower legs and nose. Oh, I got a hottie in Houston that'll bite that off for him. She'll take it off for free and swallow it. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's right. <laughs> the girl fight down there. Yeah. yeah. Last um, week in Houston. Yeah. So uh, I'm just um, saying, you, right. you may want to, if you're JB, if you're, if you're JB, you're Spalding, you may want to get the dog checked. And I would also suggest whoever owns that dog um, get uh, get that. I mean, JB needs to get checked. I would also have the dog checked because who knows what bacteria is in JB Prisker's saliva as well. Uh-huh. I mean, it goes both ways is my <laughs> point. Well, don't you let high, like you? Give high kisses, right? That see this this sounds really bad and inappropriate. Sure, Saturday night, me Hayek. It's a peanut butter. Jar of peanut butter. <laughs> That's not a Kong. Okay, you had to turn an important medical issue into something <laughs> tawdry I'm and obscene. I had no idea that that could happen. It's outrageous. Uh, speaking of tawdry and obscene. Uh, this uh, oh boy. That fun- didn't take long. fungible uh, state ref we talked about yesterday's story broke during the show. Nick Sauer, uh, you know, one of these uh, kind of windblown uh, Republican establishment mimbos uh, from Lake Barrington, he resigned yesterday. That, that didn't take long. No. Uh, after a uh, report came out to where an ex-girlfriend accused him of catfishing her using risque photos of her to set up a fake Instagram account where he was uh, communicating with other dudes about his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend and talking, apparently, graphically about Oh, he had conversations. His girlfriend. According to the report and his ex-girlfriend, Kate Kelly, um, uh, he had conversations with eight men that were going on for a few years. So I don't know if he was trying to hurt her with revenge porn because that's how she classified it. I think he was just trolling for dudes. Could be. Could be. (laughs) That's conjecture on my part. That is. Regardless, But it stands to reason. He said, after speaking with my family, I felt it best to step away from my public responsibilities. Yeah. Jim Durkin, Illinois House (laughs) Republican leader, (laughs) uh, said that this is troubling and we should allow the proper authorities to conduct their investigation. He's the one who actually came forward with the release stating that he will be resigning effective immediately so his resignation was tendered at 5 p.m. yesterday. Bye-bye. Yeah. 
Chicago Hardly po- knew you for... Chicago police investigation. That's because because uh, his ex girlfriend filed a complaint, and revenge porn is illegal. So uh, he does face potentially criminal charges yeah. as well with false this. impersonation. Uh, and uh, and I understand uh, he has already uh, started dating Manti Teo's former girlfriend. <laughs> Stop it! Here's Governor Bruce Rauner who twisted this. Just you have this is fantastic. What's clear is Madigan has hidden accusations. Uh, he has pushed back against those who would come forward, and pr- his, his uh, lieutenants have threatened individuals. His, he's created a culture of harassment and hiding the harassment. That, wow. that was his response to what Nick Sauer. That was his response to Nick Sauer tendering his resignation because How of do these you, allegations. Uh, Governor Ronner, uh, nice weather today, isn't it? What I know about the weather is that Mike Madigan is responsible for... The cold front near the lake. Yeah. I mean, it's, honestly, could you be more clunky? If He's uncomfortable in his own skin. That's all uh, I can tell do, you. Could you have anything to say other than Madigan? Oh, by the way, Governor, if we're being honest, which I know is not your strong suit, um, we know, fact, the Legislative Inspector General's office with respect to claims against legislators, sexual harassment, and, you know, the full gamut. There was no appointment made for more than two and a half years. Two and a half years that office sat idle. That's Republicans and Democrats. The uh, Legislative Ethics Commission responsible for the appointment, yes, it is majority Democrats since there's a majority in the House. Republicans are on that committee, too. They also did nothing. Said nothing. You did nothing. You said nothing until Denise Rothheimer and others finally came forward and exposed the fact that this office was vacant, which was a nice sort of um, uh, non-aggression pact between the two parties in Springfield. And as we've seen here, yes, you've got uh, thugs and sexual de- deviance within uh, Madigan's inner circle, who've uh, been exposed, and that's a good thing. But they're not the only ones, are they? Um, Also, 35-year-old Nick Sauer, just in case you didn't know, he was a member of the House Sexual Harassment and Discrimination Task Force. Mm. Yeah. So, again. And he was on that task force while he was continuing to uh, pretend to be somebody he wasn't and speak with eight dudes. Yeah. Via... Yeah. Instagram. What would you? That li- old Instagram. Yeah, tell me what you like to. Here's my picture of my girlfriend. What would you like to do with her? Or with me? And then he pretended that he was her. So it was a little. Well, right. That's yeah. Why, okay. That's my okay, point. I g- yeah. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> he and Kate Kelly met on Tinder. That always ends well. Or grinder. A few years ago. Tinder or grinder. No, it was. Which one's the? No, the Tinder. Yeah. And um, she moved here from California to Chicago to be with him, and she wanted to be reimbursed for. Travel fees. Which he was as he was trying to weird. clean up his mess. Um, La- can I have a dating tip for the ladies? If you are wanting to have a long-distance relationship, if they really want to see you, they will buy your ticket. Don't buy your own ticket. Have the man buy the ticket. Then you know that he really wants to see you. Don't buy your own ticket and then charge him later for it. Bad form. But I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well... Okay. We can always grow and learn yeah, relationships. No. And yeah. I just want Kate Kelly to know that next time this happens, have them buy the ticket because if they want to see you, they'll. They broke up eventually because he had another girlfriend that she didn't know about. Yeah, a girl, another girlfriend, huh? Girlfriend. Manteo. What is his name? Manti Teo. Manti Teo. Uh, so, the, the, so, the may, so, again, the tip is. The tip is if they want to see you, they will buy your transportation, whether it be a train or a plane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or an Uber. Or whatever. But don't pay for your own way to get there. Thank you for that. That's like a. You know, Why buy the, the cow if you can get the milk for free? The more you know. Yeah. Kind of uh, moment. The relationship advice segment. <laughs> there it is. Listen to podcast of Dan and Amy from the AM560 mobile app. Download it today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. Amy Jacobson will have more advice for would-be gold diggers in the 7 o'clock hour, so we're going to stay tuned for that. Forecast for today, partly sunny, a shower or thunderstorm, we're hoping around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Right in time for the march on Lakeshore Drive and up to Wrigley. Um, A high of 82 degrees, then tonight clear, a low of 64, and for tomorrow it's going to be a beautiful day, mostly sunny, pleasant, a high of 82. 
Let's get into the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Here is Jim Telemonte. Thanks, Amy and Dan. Yeah, it could be a messy afternoon traffic-wise with that protest on the north side of Lollapalooza starting later this morning. Right now, it's fairly routine. The Eden's 25 minutes, Lake Hook to Montrose, up on 21, westbound spur heavy, so you get past Waukegan Road. Kennedy and Vandalay start at Cumberland. Now, 40 minutes, so here to downtown, up on 30. Eisenhower, 46 minutes, 355 to the drive, up on 34. Stevenson, 51 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive, up on 38. Ryan, 30 minutes, 95th to downtown. North about Tri-State Jam, 95th to LaGrange Road, from the Stevenson to the Hinsdale Oasis, and from Reagan to Ed Lawrence, at Ridge Royal, type Finley to St. Charles. I'm Jim Talamonte in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. I'm Lou Dobbs. Apple investors awaiting the first trillion-dollar publicly traded company milestone. Amazon and other shippers lobbying on behalf of the U.S. Postal Service. Those stories are next. How much do you spend on your pest control each year? $200? $300? Or even $500 or more? What if I said you could spend less than $25 a year? Even less with promo code SAVE20? Then listen up. G'day, I'm Scott from Plug-In Pest Free, and yes, it is possible to rid your home or business of unwanted pests for less than $25 per year. The answer is Plug-In Pest Free. Our best seller, the Plug-In Pest Free Pro, will cover up to 4,000 square feet. Now that's fair income. For just a one-time cost of only $249, even less with promo code SAVE20, You'll be pest-free for years to come. Log on to gopestfree.com today. Use promo code SAVE20 and start driving those pests away. Don't spray and regret. Plug in and forget. Gopestfree.com. That's gopestfree.com. Promo code SAVE20. An update for Apple as the iPhone maker shares set another all-time high. Apple is set to become the very first publicly traded company to surpass a trillion dollars in market value. Apple about $15 billion short from that benchmark now. Amazon and other shippers have formed a lobbying group. It's called the Package Coalition, designed to protect the U.S. Postal Service's package delivery platform. President Trump has charged that taxpayers are footing the bill to subsidize Amazon's e-commerce profits. Wall Street today pouring over quarterly financial results from Yum! Brands. Also ahead, the Commerce Department reports on factory orders for the month of June. Please join me for Lou Dobbs tonight, 7 and 11 Eastern, on the Fox Business Network. This is the Lou Dobbs Financial Report. That's odd. The Package Coalition. Did you hear that? Amazon starting the Package Coalition. It's the name of my high school band, the Racer Cover Band. <laughs> Sounds shifty. Pain drugs are addictive and have side effects. Get off the drugs and get rid of the pain. You don't need to live with chronic pain. Let's repeat that. You do not have to live in pain. Chronic pain is the worst from an accident or pain that just develops. Dr. Ken Candido is one of the most respected and successful pain doctors in the world. Dr. Candido will find the source of your chronic pain and fix it. He teaches pain management around the world and has been voted one of Chicago's best pain doctors several times. Okay, you get it. He's the pain doctor you need. Dr. Candido of Chicago Anesthesia and Pain Specialist will help you get off the pain medication and all of its side effects. You can get your life back. Drugs mask the pain. Find the source and fix it. Call Dr. Ken Candido and make an appointment with a cutting-edge, respected, and successful pain physician. Go to MyPainChicago.com. That's MyPainChicago.com. Thousands have been helped with their chronic pain. You can be the next one. Get the phone number and all the info at MyPainChicago.com. My name is Lauren Sullivan, and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis nine years ago, and I was severely disabled. And about six years ago, my mother had found Balance of Nature, so we decided to give it a try because at that point, uh, nothing was helping. I was skeptical at first, but over time I realized I had more energy levels. Um, I was sleeping better, which was huge, and my hair looked better, my skin looked better, my nails looked better, and then I was able to weed off some of those medications. And I know, had I not found Balance of Nature, I would not be living the quality of life that I am now. When you call, use discount code CHICAGO and we'll take 35% off your first preferred set of fruits and veggies and have them shipped to you free. Call 800-246-8751. That's 1-800-246-8751 or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. On AM560 The Answer, we talk about the important issues that affect your world. Things like the economy, education, and foreign policy. There's always so much going on in the news that we don't always have the time to focus in and talk about the big ideas behind 
the important issues. Enter Upstream Ideas online at upstream-ideas.com. Upstream Ideas, in partnership with the Illinois Opportunity Project, provides the kind of information that informs the policy discussions happening here on AM560. At Upstream Ideas, you'll broaden the debate, move beyond partisan assumptions, and challenge accepted beliefs. Upstream Ideas goes against the current and thinks upstream. Go online now at upstream-ideas.com. That's upstream-ideas.com. You'll be armed with new information and fresh perspectives to help encourage you to make the state of Illinois and the United States of America a bit freer, a bit more just, and a bit more civilized. Upstream-ideas.com. When a tornado rips through Kansas, Dorothy Gale and her dog Toto are whisked away to the magical land of Oz. They follow the yellow brick road toward the Emerald City to meet the Wizard of Oz. A timeless classic now playing at the Palace Theater in the Wisconsin Dells. The Palace Theater is a marvelous time for the entire family and will build extraordinary memories year-round. Broadway musicals, theater classics, and special tribute artist performances dot the calendar. For more information, visit dellspalace.com. Coming up at the Palace Theater, this is Tom Jones, The Tribute, August 31st and September 1st. Staying Alive, a Bee Gees tribute, one night only, Thursday, September 6th. And then it's John Denver tribute artist, Ted Vigil, September 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's the Palace Theater Concert Series in the Wisconsin Dells. For more information, visit dellspalace.com. How do you manage risk? True North Companies has a team of trusted advisors concentrated in employee benefits, workers' comp, and property casualty insurance focus on offering innovative solutions to meet the needs of companies throughout the Midwest. True North's unique process, the Enterprise Navigator, goes beyond simply placing your insurance. The team works with companies like yours to evaluate compliance, manage risk, and help you seek financial savings by addressing education, finance transfer, technology, wellness, and claims management. Some companies calculate risk better than others. Do what you can to ensure all factors of the equation are accounted for by working with True North. To learn more or to request a no-obligation risk management assessment, visit truenorthcompanies.com or call 847-699-1400. True North Companies, unique services, innovative solutions. True North Companies proudly sponsors AM560's charity golf outing, benefiting the 100 Club of Chicago, providing financial relief and college scholarships to families of first responders who lost their lives in the line of duty. There's always that time of day when the sun creates havoc at the office. This is ridiculous. You're literally blinded by the light. Ah! can't see a thing on your computer monitor and feel like you're baking in an oven make your office or storefront distraction free with custom shades from 1-800-4-BLINDS you'll keep your customers comfortable protect furnishings and decor from fading and have happy productive employees that don't have to stop in the middle of a project because of the glare 1-800-4-BLINDS can get the job done quickly with their local in-house installation crew you'll save money on window treatments that not only look great but will also help you shrink utility bills with special heat reducing shades that can trap heat between the window and shade they also offer custom painted solar shades with your logo or photo image printed directly on the shade get the sun out of your eyes call 1-800-4-BLINDS direct for a consultation today 773-447-5448 or visit 1-800-4-BLINDS-CHICAGO.COM that's 1-800 the number 4 BLINDS-CHICAGO.COM AM 560, The Answer. Quickly, uh, we did the story earlier in the week about uh, Kane County, property taxes in Kane County. In the 7.30 hour, I think it was yesterday or Monday. No, it was Tuesday, maybe. 3.5% of home value routinely, just equity being decimated in Kane County. Uh, three times the national average. We gave examples of people who've just completely taken a bath. And, of course, talking about middle-income families getting hammered, uh, their home value being destroyed by confiscatory property taxes. Maybe this has something to do with it. Retired Kane County Water District employee has banked $3.5 million in pension payments <laughs> since he retired 20 years ago at the age of 58. Albin Pagorski has received $3.5 million what? from the Fox River Water Reclamation District which serves 180,000 residents in Elgin, South Elgin, West Dundee. We are in the wrong job. Pagorski's current annual benef- pension benefit is 211 grand. 
despite having only contributed $93,000 to his retirement during his 40 years of work. Contributed 93, 3.5 million and counting, 211 grand a year. Uh, the math just doesn't add up. That is you, ridiculous. It is not just about pension payments being skipped, politicians short funding pensions. It is about benefit levels in the state that are not, not financeable. And this is why pension job or home, which is it going to be? Your home is being taken from you because of these stories, because of the examples like this. This is what's actually happening on the ground. Raw numbers, real stories. Coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Oh, uh, tutoring your kid uh, in video games at 707. Oh, that's right. You could get scholarships. But first, let's go into the newsroom. Here is Mike Scott. A partly sunny day ahead. We'll have a full forecast. WIND Chicago News Time, 7 o'clock. Who's in those flag-draped boxes? I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. I found myself looking at every single one as they came out of the plane. Diana Brown San Filippo was in Hawaii when the Korean War remains arrived. And in my mind was going, are you there, Daddy? She and a lot of other families are awaiting the identifications. Fox's Rachel Sutherland live in Washington. Dave, it could take months or even years to positively identify all the remains inside the 55 boxes that North Korea handed over. Vice President Mike Pence told Fox and Friends the return of the remains shows the U.S. leaves no service member behind. We will afford the honor and the recognition and the compassion uh, that the families of our fallen and our fallen are due. Dog tags can help the identification process and teeth can be matched to dental records. If DNA testing is needed, samples will be sent to a lab at Dover Air Force Base. Dave. Now, Rachel, after midnight, President Trump thanked North Korea's leader in a tweet for sending the remains two months after their summit. But yesterday's Trump tweet is still a topic of debate. He wrote the attorney general should stop the rigged witch hunt right now, referring to the special counsel's Russia probe. Democrats call it an attempt to obstruct justice. The president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, says no. He expresses his opinions on Twitter. He used the word should. He didn't use the word must. And there was no presidential directive that followed it. Giuliani is also continuing to negotiate with Robert Mueller for a possible interview with President Trump, though some questions could be in writing. More than 13,000 firefighters keep battling the wildfires across California. The state's already spent a quarter of its annual fire budget a month into the fiscal year. Governor Jerry Brown blames climate change. Uh, some of this is unprecedented, and we're learning as we go. But we're in a new normal. Tens of thousands of people remain evacuated in and around Redding. Nearly 1,100 homes there have burned down. Six people have died. This is Fox News. Fair and balanced. 72 degrees, partly sunny skies. 702 on AM 560. The answer. Good morning. I'm Mike Scott. An investigation is underway following a deadly shooting in Maywood. Authorities investigating say Kevin Sturkey was shot Tuesday evening in the 1800 block of South First Avenue. He died nearby at a nearby hospital. No arrests have been made in that case. Anti-violence protesters are planning to try and shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive and some streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon. A march is expected to begin at 4 p.m. Those marchers will try to uh, get on Lakeshore Drive near Diversity before Heading to Wrigleyville, the Cubs do have a home game at 7.05. A state lawmaker from the northwest suburbs stepping down following allegations that he posted nude photographs of an ex-girlfriend on social media. Illinois Representative Nick Sauer from Lake Barrington resigned yesterday, saying addressing the accusations would impact his ability to serve as a legislator. Willie Wilson is denying allegations. He's trying to buy the vote in a bid to become mayor of Chicago. The businessman discussed the accusations yesterday while handing out more than $100,000 to Cook County residents. Today is not about political for me. You know, this is a day for trying to help, you know, and that's exactly what I'm, what I'm doing. The Illinois Campaign for Political Reform filed a complaint against Wilson claiming that he violated campaign finance law. Lollapalooza kicks off today here in Chicago. Thousands will be rushing the gates at Grant Park for the annual Music Fest that runs through Sunday. Cole Hamill's first start as a Cub, not too bad, struck out nine in a win over the Pirates, 9-2. to two. 
Royals uh, doubled up the White Sox 10 to 5. The news is a service of Compassion International. Sponsoring a child with compassion is the most effective way to end extreme child poverty. Release a child from poverty when you become a Compassion sponsor. Choose your child now at Compassion.com slash radio and do your part to release a child from poverty today. 704 and a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM 560. As press secretary for President Trump, Sean Spicer had a front row seat to history. And in his new book, he reveals details about what really happened behind the scenes during the campaign and the early days of the administration. On Wednesday, August 8th, Sean Spicer is coming to Chicago. Meet Sean Spicer and get a copy of his new book, The Briefing, at the Museum of Broadcast Communications. Tickets are absolutely free. Thanks to healthinsurancementors.com. Get your tickets at 560theanswer.com slash briefing. That's 560theanswer.com slash briefing. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event. And now, while selection is best, it's the best time to buy. With amazing offers across a full lineup of Ford vehicles, now is the time to make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand. Stop by a local Ford store or shop online at buyfordnow.com because there is no better time than right now to get behind the wheel of a new Ford during the Ford Summer Sales Event. summer sales event is here right now get zero percent apr financing for 72 months plus one thousand dollars ford credit bonus cash on a great lineup of ford suvs best-selling claim based on 2017 calendar year sales not all buyers qualify for ford credit financing 72 months at 1389 per month for one thousand finance regardless of down payment not available on expedition for all offers take new retail delivery from authorized ford dealer stock by 831.18 see dealer or go to buyfordnow.com for qualifications and details Seven oh five and a check on the roads in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Here is Jim Telemonte. Thanks, Mike. In Don Eden's heavy sister out of Montrose, twenty one minutes like Cook to the junction up on twenty two in the westbound spur is heavy. From the Edens to Waukegan Road. Kennedy inbound late start at Canfield. It is now forty four minutes so here to downtown. Twenty eight from Montrose, twenty five in the express. Outbound sixteen minutes to Montrose, thirty four to O'Hare. Gone eyes an hour, 48 minutes, 390 to downtown, 33 from Mannheim, up on 36 minutes to 390. Stevenson, 51 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive, up on 38. Ryan, 33 minutes, 90 to downtown, I think 7, here's your poor, just with two minute delays approaching the merge. Southbound Tri State bottled up 190 to Irving Park. Northbound from 111th to LaGrange Road, where there was a crash. Then from the Stevenson to the Hinsdale Oasis, and from the Reagan to Lloyd Lawrence. Veterans Memorial slow southbound St. Charles to 22nd, northbound 63rd to North Avenue. The other tollways are fine, and northwest Indiana's clear. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center with our meteorologist, Kevin Snyder. Scattered showers and thunderstorms for the afternoon. Otherwise, partial sunshine throughout the day today with a high getting up to 82. Then for tonight, it will be mainly clear, though patchy fogs will develop after midnight in the suburbs with a low today of 64. I'm Kevin Snyder on AM560, The Answer. Currently 72 at O'Hare. Next news at 730. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560, The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by Real Estate Revealed with Randy Barcella, Sunday morning starting at 8. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM 560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. President Trump uh, called on Jeff Sessions and got no answer, perhaps the wrong number or the wrong request. And the request was, it's a terrible situation. And Attorney General Jeff Sessions should stop this rigged witch hunt right now before it continues to stay in our country any further. Bob Mueller is totally conflicted, and his 17 angry Democrats that are doing his dirty work are a disgrace to USA! Exclamation point Trump tweet on topic. A uh, good idea for Jeff Sessions to remove Bob Mueller. 
politically, substantively, make sense to you? Good idea for Trump to tweet as such. 312-642-5600, turnkey.pro answer line. 64636DA, turnkey.pro text line. Now, Trump did get the right number when he called in to uh, Rush Limbaugh's show yesterday. Rush Limbaugh celebrating his 30th and 30th anniversary of his show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people like us need to genuflect before Rush and all that he's done for talk radio in three decades. Uh, But Trump uh, took the occasion to uh, restate his position with respect to funding for border security in the forthcoming budget before the forthcoming or perhaps after the forthcoming midterm election. He hedged a little bit, did Trump. And it's interesting. So you've got and I understand you can walk and chew gum at the same time, but you've got uh, uh, Trump making a lot of Republicans uncomfortable with his tweets about Mueller, particularly yesterday's, and making uh, a lot of Republicans uncomfortable with respect to his saber rattling about shutting down the government over border wall funding. The other thing is the wall. We've started it. It's it's like pulling to getting these guys to to get it done is uh, and you have no idea how tough I've been. And I say, hey, if you have a shutdown, you have a shutdown. Now, the shutdown could also take place after the election. I happen to think it's a great political thing because people want border security. Yeah. So it's interesting, the little bit of hedge there. Republicans have been supportive of him. He wants to work with them. Some of it said do it after the midterm. He thinks it's a good idea to, but to do it before the midterm, uh, to you know force this decision and potentially that government shutdown, such as that term even is accurate. It's really a misnomer, temporary, temporary delay and a small fraction of the government. Because when it's all over, everyone gets paid anyway. Yeah, they get back pay. And 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 a and small the percentage are furloughed. Are, yeah. yeah. But uh, but nonetheless, it's the theatrics, it's the, the the media hysteria surrounding it, and Republicans on the Hill nervous about that before the midterms, and Trump seems open to waiting till after the midterms. But you need turnout before the midterms, not after. And so if it's seen like you're watering down, weakening, uh, potentially punting again on bor- on border security and the wall so central to his campaign— a key promise that he made, you know, I, I just I don't really understand what Trump's thinking is with respect to the Mueller stuff combined with his hedge on border wall and border security funding with ostensibly the desire to hold the House. And he still wants to have a face to face sit down with Robert Mueller, uh, lawyer Rudy Giuliani. He's always been interested in testifying. It's us meaning the team of lawyers, including me, that have the most reservations about that. And Mueller offered, you know, yesterday, saying, because they're going back and forth, he's offered to reduce the number of obstruction-related questions if they ha- if he's addressed in person and not just in written answers. And I think that's fraught with danger, and that's just a perjury trap. <laughs> so if I was President Trump, I know he wants to clear his name. I, want, I know he wants his Mueller investigation to go away, but I would never— sit down with a face-to-face. And I know there's some disappointment with uh, Jeff Sessions and his performance as attorney general so far among Trump supporters, but you really think that this makes sense for Jeff Sessions to fire Bob Mueller politically? I think it'd be awful. 312-642-5600, turnkey.pro answer line. 64636DA, turnkey.pro text line. Uh, Related uh, note on the midterm, since this is sort of all funneling into that. Barack Obama released his endorsements. I saw that. Yeah. And guess who is not on the list? Did you notice? Uh, Maria Ocasio, uh, I mean, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, yeah. Well, she doesn't need to be. It's a Democrat district. I know, but still, I think that sounds a message that we're still a Democratic Party and not a Socialist Party. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, no, Why wouldn't he just throw her name in there? I don't think it, because it's not a competitive race. Right. I, mean, that, I mean, think of look at the races he endorsed in Illinois. Not that these will end up being competitive, but some of them are. But for Congress, he endorsed um, Sean Caston against uh, Roscom, yeah. Brendan Kelly against Bost, and um, Lauren Underwood against Hulker. And those are all swing races this year. They're looking to be. 
So he's endorsing swing races where it matters. That's where OFA is going to play. They're not going to play in 80, 80% dem districts. So I think the people are like, oh, he didn't endorse it. That's a, a walk back. It's showing the Democrat moderates or centrists are reasserting themselves. First of all, Obama's not a centrist. He's the front man for the radical left, and he has been his entire political career. Yeah, that's how I thought he, she'd have her at the top of the list. It's a, it's a, it's there's <laughs> but, the, yeah, you're right, that congressional race. It, there is yeah, no race. There's no race. So, yeah, I mean, it would be irrelevant. that He's only endorsing a, a handful of candidates in, uh, you know, s uh, states around the country. Uh, Mike in Big Rock, you're on Chicago's Morning Answer. Yeah, hi, Dan and Amy. You know, one thing we forget is that um, – the work environment around President Trump concerning this investigation is it's, it's like it's toxic. People that worked for him during the campaign have had to spend millions to defend themselves. And, um, you know, he's probably sticking up for those people as well because he's seen their lives ruined. Well, he should say that. I mean, he should say that explicitly, but even still, uh, politically, I mean, even though there's that's a, it's a fair point you're making. Um, uh, even though um, you know, perhaps some people have been uh, uh, unfairly harmed politically, politically. Do you, do you understand the daisy chain this would set off were Jeff Sessions to violate his recusal and fire Bob Mueller? There would be a lot more uh, heads being chopped off at justice or uh, people walking before that happened. And then... It, it, this dominates the discussion going into the midterms. Do you think this is the, do you want this to be the referendum question in the minds of voters, whether the Mueller firing was appropriate or not? Uh, do you want the election to be a referendum on Trump impeachment, as Rudy Giuliani suggests it will be? Or do you want it to be a referendum on some of the accomplishments of the Trump administration, particularly the economy's performance in the last 18 months? John in Palatine. Hi, Dan and Amy. Uh, personally, I would uh, like to see the government shut down indefinitely, and at least in my case, when, when if I shut my job down, I wouldn't get paid. So no one should get paid during the shutdown, and I think that's how Trump should spin it. Okay, thanks for the call, John. Jim in Tampa. Good morning, guys. Were you at the uh, rally? I think it's a I think it's a bad tweet. No, I wasn't there. Oh. Uh, but I heard a lot of people talking about it. People loved it down here. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think it's a bad tweet, that particular one, uh, for the reasons you just said, Dan. I mean, it would really change the whole narrative of, uh, of, of what everybody's talking about. Uh, but the other, the other side is um, when you were talking about Trump hedging, I actually didn't see it as a hedge. I think Trump has this way where he goes into kind of like a uh, an analyst mode uh, where he's talking and then suddenly he's analyzing both sides of an issue out loud, talking out loud. They think it's this, but I actually think it's that. And it's almost like he sees himself as a sports analyst, you know, at halftime talking about what happened in the first half and what we should do in the second half. I, I don't know. That's well. That's, that's put, saw, that. yeah. That's part of it. But but he left the door open to the idea of pushing it past the midterms, and I think that's a mistake. And I think you should say it's a mistake so that people understand on the hill that he is going to the mat on this. And uh, yeah, that that yeah, it's probably his lack of experience as a politician coming out there. Thanks. Because you're right. Thanks for the call, Jim. Appreciate it. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one. Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Coming up next, could you get a college scholarship for playing video games? And what France is doing may surprise you and may make you want to move to that country. But first, here's your forecast today. Partly sunny, a shower or thunderstorm around this afternoon in certain spots a high of 82 tonight clear a low of 64 and for friday mostly sunny a high in the low 80s let's get into the alarm detection systems traffic center busy day uh and a busy weekend here's jim telemonte that's right amy and of course Lollapalooza opens later this morning you'll have heavy traffic in the downtown area and as part of the security for this year's event michigan avenue will not allow any vehicles larger than the cargo van uh, during the days of the festival from 1.30 in the afternoon to midnight, and Michigan Avenue will close 
between Roosevelt and Wacker from 9.30 to 11 each night. Of course, you've got the planned protest on the north side expected to potentially shut down Lakeshore Drive in Belmont and Fullerton this afternoon. Right now, the Edens, 21 minutes. Lake Hook to Montrose, out on 25. Kennedy looking at a travel time. We'll head to downtown of 44 minutes, out on 34. In Mount Ike, 45 minutes, 390 to downtown, out on 38. Stevenson, 51 minutes, 355 to the drive. Ryan, 34 minutes, 95th to downtown. Southbound Tri-State heavy now, Oak Plain to Bradley at 190 to Irving Park. Northbound 111th to LaGrange Road. And the Stevenson to 47th up from the Reagan Show at Lawrence. I'm Jim Talamonte in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. All right. I've already made it very clear that I love my pillow. Their mattress toppers, their sheets, the travel pillows, they're all incredible. But you might not know that my pillow also makes pet beds. That's right. The same incredible form-fitting fill that you use, that they use in their pillows, Made in America, is also made in your favorite pet bed, and it's washable and dryable when it gets dirty. And from now through August 23rd, you can win a My Pillow pet bed by entering our Dog Days of Summer contest. Just go to 560theanswer.com/dog. Vote high. Submit a picture of your dog. Go bunky. Then tell your friends, family, and social network to vote for your dog. The dog who receives the most votes will win a pet bed from My Pillow. And you can also vote for my dog, Bunky, or Dan's dog. <laughs> Hayek. And you well, know what I'm we should sorry. do? We should, we should do this like Napoleon Dynamite, where we have to have, there's a talent competition, and we have to do something in advance of our candidate, me yeah. for Hayek, you for Bunky. Okay. Such as. And then record that. And, oh, okay. Uh, so that and then post it on the website next to our dog. Well, if one of our dogs win it, and Bunky will, then we get to award the bed to a listener of our choice. So go to 560theanswer.com slash dog to submit a picture of your dog or to vote for your favorite dog. Go, Bunky, go. And don't forget that in August you can purchase a MyPillow mattress topper and receive two standard MyPillows for free. Also, you can get 50% off the MyPillow 4-pack, which is two pillows and two go-anywhere MyPillows when you use the promo code Amy and get 30% off everything else at MyPillow.com, including those dog beds. MyPillow.com, promo code Amy. Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. Thousands of doctors, health specialists, and professionals recommend Balance of Nature as a way of improving their health. Listen to a few unsolicited success stories from doctors that use Balance of Nature as well. Scientific research has shown that many cancers and lifestyle diseases can be prevented with a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. This prevention comes from the phytochemicals in the plants. I take Balance of Nature because I know, I've seen it in my lab, and I know that it works. I've seen the immune response increase, I've seen your DNA repair capacity increase, and I've seen DNA protection. And that, to me, as a scientist, rings so true. When you call, use discount code CHICAGO and we'll take 35% off your first month's order and ship it to you free. Call 800-2468-751. That's 1-800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. Looking for a fun summer vacation idea? Charlottesville in Albemarle County, Virginia is a short and easy trip with daily nonstop flights on two airlines from O'Hare. Tour the homes of former presidents Jefferson, Monroe, and Madison. Sip wine at one of the area's 30-plus wineries. Take a hike in Shenandoah National Park. Dine al fresco at one of the many farm-to-table restaurants. Or stroll down one of the longest pedestrian malls in the country. Plan your trip today at visitcharlottesville.org. On August 10th, get ready for a comedy that's off the leash. Do you think I'm ridiculous throwing a party for my dog? I would say that bouncy house is over the top. Four lonely strangers will discover that man's best friend... No offense, but is your dog pregnant or just super fat? ...are the best matchmakers. Dogs open their hearts to love and to be loved. This dog has made us a family. Dog Days, in theaters August 10th. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest-growing, independently-owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter. Signature Bank knows your name and your story. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my business bank. I'm Tom Golab, Chief Financial Officer of Navitas Systems, a leader in the next generation of advanced battery technology and a customer of Signature Bank. A few years ago, I heard Signature Bank on an AM560 radio ad just as our previous commercial bank was being acquired. I knew Mick O'Rourke and Kevin Bastuga from a prior enterprise. I valued my relationship with them 
and the way they work to earn my trust and my business. So I decided to give Signature Bank a call. They took the time to understand our early stage technology company that has its own set of challenges. Signature Bank took care of us and now we are satisfied customers. Signature Bank is looking for their next success story. To learn more about turning your business vision into reality, visit SignatureBank.Bank. Signature Bank, helping local businesses succeed. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. At ACE, we believe there's nothing better than helping kids. That's why we've been proud to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals for over 25 years. This Friday through Sunday, get our five-gallon bucket and 20% off almost anything that fits inside when you donate $5 to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. And like ACE, CMN Hospitals are local, so the money you donate helps kids near you. ACE is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Offer valid at participating stores on regular price merchandise only. Additional conditions and exclusions apply. See store for details. On the streets of Miami, speed is the law. So when a corn dog goes after the wrong girl, oh, heartburn. one man will bring her Tums Ultra Strength. I'm on my way. Don't get wrecked by heartburn. Nothing works faster than Tums. Your mustard's fast, but my Tums are faster. Oh. And with Tums on the go rolls, it's never been easier to leave heartburn behind. You did it. Yeah. You gonna finish that corn dog? Tums Ultra Strength, available in a store near you. Are you tired of working for someone else making them rich? Do you have a positive attitude and an entrepreneur mindset? And are you willing to take real risk? Then you're in luck. The NV Real Estate Company has been perfecting the art of wholesaling properties for cash. And when you call now, they'll send you a free copy of their new kit, The Hidden Treasures in Wholesaling Property. In this kit, you'll see their wholesaling formula for locating, evaluating, and flipping properties for profit in any area. You'll also learn how to potentially access discounted real estate and find the right funding partners for that property to wholesale. Call 1-800-587-0182 now to get your free wholesaling kit. Call 800-587-0182 now and get free admission to live training in your area, which includes a free meal, a free smartwatch, and free USB drive loaded with his training information. Call 800-587-0182. That's 800-587-0182 now and get your free kit today. AM560, the answer. Dan and Amy uh, talking about Trump's tweet and, of course, the howls from Democrats of prima facie evidence of uh, obstruction, although they didn't use prima facie because they don't know what that means. Prima, that's a scrub I used on my face last night. Yeah. And it's exfoliating. It, no, that's yeah. why you have such great skin. Exactly. Uh, it's not me saying it. It's Lake County Sheriff saying that. <laughs> uh, and so here's the thing. Um, uh, just even if you're a subject of an investigation, you don't lose your First Amendment rights. So the, uh, the assertion that Trump's tweet is evidence of obstruction is absurd. But uh, that's the the tip of the iceberg in terms of the fury you would hear if Jeff Sessions actually did what Donald Trump suggested he should do. Nick, in an undisclosed location, you're in Chicago's Morning Answer. Good morning. How you doing today? Morning. Good. Uh, the tweet's not that big of a deal. I mean, even Rosenstein said they found no collusion on any part of any American, so why keep this thing going? It's just a waste of money. Well, that's right. I mean, that's that's a fair point or a fair position to take based on the absolute lack of evidence and in support of the claims of collusion, conspiracy, obstruction to this point. However, the question, is Trump right to tweet this? Would uh, it be smart for Jeff Sessions to violate his recusal and fire Bob Mueller? Oh, sure. I would do it in a heartbeat. And the other problem we have is these congressmen. They should be giving him the money for the wall. Who votes these people in? You, I mean, this is me. amazing. This should have been a hands-down money given for the wall on the first budget. All right. Thanks for the call, Nick. Nate in Bridgeport. Yes. You know what? My, it comes to mind. The only thing, the only reason why uh, Jeff Sessions won't weigh in is because Mueller's got something on him. That's how. That's how. This. That's that's what this has become. These guys have a history of playing dirty like that, and it, it's the only thing that makes sense. Well, I don't know. There's don't know. no evidence of that either. Thanks for the call, Nate. And uh, you know, I think did Sessions have to recuse himself in this matter? No, but it was a close call. He did seek counsel before making the decision. 
And <sighs> President Trump is still upset with that. Uh, obviously. Yeah, obviously. But, I mean, are his tweets official statements? It doesn't matter. What's, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't, what I is mean, an official statement versus an unofficial statement? It's the, the well, president of the United States making a statement. It's obstruction of justice because he wants to yeah, well, be yeah, right. secretly he, pushing. Well, not secretly. He wants Sessions to end the investigation to fire Mueller. I don't Attorney think Attorney General smart. Jeff Sessions should stop the, the rigged witch hunt. That's what he tweeted. Mm. That's... Um, Again, First Amendment rights, even if you're the subject of an investigation, that is not criminal. Not criminal. Okay, but now the question is, is it smart? Those are two different questions, and I agree with you. I don't think it's smart. Megan on the South Side. Hi, good morning, guys. Um, I don't think it's smart, but my question is, what is the left? prepared to do if Mueller does become fired? Are they not already at cr critical mass? Yeah, I but can't imagine how far, oh, you know, how far they could still go. Well, right, but you're you're feeding that. You're giving them, um, you know, the, the perception of guilt. You're giving them more ammo. You don't want to arm your enemy. I mean, I know we do that here in the Illinois Republican Party, but I don't think we should scale that model nationally. I want to finance my enemy. I want to arm my enemy, give him more munitions. No, that's what this would do. Jeff and Berwin. Uh, greetings, uh, Dan and Amy. No, they're not going to fire anybody before the election for the exact reason that Dan has been saying, politically uh, suicide. However, after the election, when the Republicans have maintained control of the House and they add a few senators, which they will, then it's open season because the political fallout will dissipate in a few months. Now, I'm not saying Trump do the firing. He's going to have Jeff Sessions retire or resign because he's basically incompetent. He's going to appoint a new attorney general, maybe Joe DeGeneva or somebody like that, and then let him do the firing. Hmm. It's all, right. all very simple. All right. okay. okay, possibly. All right, thanks for the call, Jeff. Coming up, that's oh, simple. Yeah. But it's just the way you made it sound was it's, simple. Yeah, it made it sound beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer, Elk Grove Village sponsors a college bowl game. It is a first for a municipality. Judicious way to spend taxpayers' money. And uh, coming up at 737, we'll pick up our discussion of the midterms that we were having with David French from National Review. But first, let's go into the newsroom. Here's Mike Scott. Partly cloudy skies, 72 degrees. The remains of American soldiers killed in North Korea on their way back to the United States. Vice President Mike Pence spoke at a ceremony in Hawaii yesterday, which honored 55 of those soldiers who reportedly died during the Korean War. But my dad, gone now 30 years, always told us that the real heroes of the Korean War were the ones that didn't get to come home. And I just know there's no place dad would rather have me be than here. Penn says more work lies ahead. Security analysts say a new group of hackers has successfully breached electricity utility networks in the United States. The hacking group has targeted companies that manage generation, transmission, or distribution of energy across the grid. A federal appeals court is ruling the Trump administration's threat to block so-called sanctuary cities from getting f some federal grants is unconstitutional. The Ninth Circuit yesterday ruling that only Congress has the authority to impose conditions on federal grants. Ohio State University is placing football coach Urban Meyer on paid leave after abuse claims were filed against his former assistant. OSU took action yesterday as it investigates a report that Meyer was aware of assault allegations made against former assistant coach Zach Smith by his ex-wife Courtney in 2015. Meyer fired Smith last week. A state lawmaker from the northwest suburbs is stepping down following allegations that he posted nude photographs of an ex-girlfriend on social media. Illinois Representative Nick Sauer resigned yesterday. Former Illinois Congressman Mel Reynolds is behind bars for the third time. Reynolds reported to a Chicago federal lockup yesterday to begin serving the remaining four months of his prison sentence. Cubs over the Pirates 9-2. Royals a double up the White Sox 10-5. Bears play the first of five preseason games tonight. 
The news is a service of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Use your power to cure and pedal with a purpose at Spin for Crohn's and Colitis Cures. Grab some friends to join you for this high-energy indoor cycling event benefiting the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Visit spin4.org to learn more. 734, a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. I am a Trump supporter. The Joe Walsh Show. Now, I am a Trump supporter who will freely criticize the president when I think he's done wrong. And done wrong can be sending out a stupid tweet, raising taxes, or supporting amnesty. It can be anything. It's the issues to me. And when President Trump does something that does not advance those issues, I'll call him out on it. The Joe Walsh Show. Weeknights, starting at 5. Right after Sean Hannity at 2 on AM 560. The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by Papa Nicholas Coffee. Papa Nicholas. Great coffee, period. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies in a Capsule. My husband's blood pressure has dropped 30 points. I've lost 8 pounds. He's lost about 20 pounds. His arthritis is gone. You guys have given me back my husband. I'd come home from work, and if he beat me home from work, he would be laying in the recliner, and I would feed him supper in his recliner and would be like really boring, pathetic, old people watching TV while we ate dinner and then go to bed exhausted and wake up tired. I came home from work last night and he was mowing the lawn. It was just, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's so amazing. (laughs) When you call, use discount code CHICAGO and we'll take 35% off your first preferred set of fruits and veggies and have them shipped to you free. Call 800-246-8751. That's 1-800-246-8751 or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. 735. Let's get a check on the roads in the alarm detection systems traffic center. Here's Jim. Thanks, Mike. Eden's inbound. You've got a two minute delay from Foster to the junction. Up on its 25 minutes to get to Lake Cook. Westbound spur heavy from Eden's to Waukegan Road. Kennedy inbound delays start at Austin, 50 minutes. O'Hare to downtown, 32 for Montrose, 27 on the Express. Up on 39 to the airport. Eisenhower, 45 minutes, 390 to downtown. Up on 38. Stevenson, 58 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. Up on 37. Ryan is 34 minutes, 95 to downtown. South on Tri-State Heavy, you'll plane to Bradley at 190 to Irving Park. Northbound in pockets from 111th to 47th, and from the Reagan to Lawrence. South on Veterans Memorial, so St. Charles to 22nd. Northbound 75th to North Avenue. Traffic service with Positive Coaching Alliance. Got issues with youth or high school sports? Positive Coaching Alliance can help. PCA offers more than 1,000 free online resources. Coaches, parents, students, and administrators. Visit PCADevZone.org. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center, partly sunny. We'll have a shower or thunderstorm around this afternoon at a high near 82. Currently 73. Next news coming up at 8. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by 1-800-4BLINDCHICAGO.COM. Call 773-447-5448 and get the sun out of your eyes. If you're talking about it, I'll be talking about it. Dennis Prager here. Join me this morning at 11, right here on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. And so uh, Sarah Sanders at the press briefing yesterday asked about uh, Jim Acosta's uh, treat Jim Acosta's treatment uh, at the uh, Trump rally in Tampa and uh, here's how that went and no broadcaster was broadcasting state secrets they were trying to do stand-ups at a public rally and you had people trying to yell over them preventing them from doing their jobs and yelling that their network sucks on live TV Look, does the White House su- support that or not? While we certainly support freedom of the press we also support freedom of speech uh, and we think that those things go hand in hand so there you go, hand in hand, freedom of speech. You can say CNN sucks as much as you want, and Jim Acosta can complain about it as much as he wants. That's the circle of life and politics, in a free society at least. 
For more on uh, this in advance of the midterm elections, we're pleased to be joined again by David French, writer at National Review, constitutional lawyer, best-selling author, veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom. David, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. So, so what about that? You know, I mean, the Trump rally, uh, the idea that uh, there was uh, colorful chanting going on at a Trump rally, that uh, this is uh, something the D.C. press corps is wringing their hands over after uh, more than two years of it, um, it becomes a little bit stale. Their complaints get, um, oh, I don't know, a little bit uh, sort of self-indulgent and, uh, and yawn-worthy for me. What about you? <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, you know, some of those videos, uh, I don't think people should act like that. Um, and, you know, I, it's, it, you look at people um, screaming profanities at them, um, you know, getting in their faces and yelling at them. Uh, it's just not the way you should act. Um, it's, I don't think that's the kind of behavior you would want to see out of Republicans. Um, and, you know, I, I, I get the Sarah Sanders point about um, freedom of speech, but you don't have the right to interrupt somebody else's speech and stop them from um, doing their jobs. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, is it the biggest deal in the world? No. Um, but it's, you know, to the extent that there's people uh, getting in somebody's face or the screaming, the yelling, the profanities, uh, all of those things, I, you know, I don't think there's any argument that reflects well on the people doing it. No, I, I uh, obviously I agree with you, but you know, it's like the the lout at the ball game screaming at uh, the pitcher and the umpire at every pitch. Um, and I and I understand that this is a sporting event and we should take our politics more seriously. But it is sort of a rally atmosphere. It's people blowing off steam. You know, the idea that this is the natural predicate to violence, that this is Stalinist, uh, as Andrea Mitchell <laughs> incredibly said earlier this week, is just a little absurd. And so on the one hand, you can say, hey, you know, temper the middle fingers and the profanity. On the other hand, um, the uh, uh, I don't want to run interference for the D.C. press corps on this stuff. <laughs> well, you know, of course, there's the overreaction to it, which is always inevitable when when. Uh, you know, there's a, any kind of negative development in the Trump era. You'll always see the rhetoric can go to 11 in the other direction. Right. You know, you've, I, mean, I, I don't know that I've, uh, you know, I, I remember when Bush was compared to Hitler, <laughs> but I don't think I've heard as many comparisons to Hitler and fascism so prison, um, oh. you know, in modern times as uh, at live. I don't know if I've ever heard so many comparisons to, to fascism. So, yeah, I think the reactions uh, go extreme in the other direction as well, for sure. Uh, I thought I was asking if you think it's extreme that President Trump had uh, tweeted yesterday that he wants the Mueller, that Sesh, he wants Jeff Sessions to end the Mueller probe, essentially you know, firing Mueller. Do you think that that is uh, an obstruction of justice, or what are your thoughts? Well, it's not obstruction of justice. I mean, uh, you know, you, you don't <laughs> tweet are not obstruction of justice. Um, you know, obstruction of justice, we have the pattern for it from based on the impeachment articles against Nixon and, and Clinton. And obstruction of justice would be, for example, if Trump lies to uh, grand jury witnesses giving them false information in the hopes that they'll deliver false information to the grand jury. That was one of the things that Bill Clinton did, that Richard Nixon did. That's what obstruction of justice is, is when you're actually interfering with uh, a lawful proceeding like a grand jury investigation. So that's, but tweets like that are not obstruction of justice. That doesn't mean that they're smart. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean that they're wise. Um, you know, I mean, he has the power to end this investigation if he wants to. Um, and, you know, I, I think what he's doing on via Twitter is just venting. Um, uh, Andy McCarthy said it pretty well. You know, look, the president actually thinks that an injustice is being done uh, in this investigation, or say to Paul Manafort, who he tweeted on behalf of also yesterday, well, he has the power to do something about it. Um, but otherwise, you know, what he should stop these tweets. Uh, Dan Henniger, writing in the Wall Street Journal, suggests that um, uh, talking about Mueller, even talking about uh, the government shutdown, potential, potentially be willing to shut the government down over border security and border wall funding is running interference into the message that Republicans should be carrying the next, the, uh, for the, the 90 some odd days uh, running uh, up to the midterm elections. 
which is uh, about the positive accomplishments of this administration, specifically the economy's performance over the, the last 18 months. Do you think that, um, you know, sort of it's the economy stupid redux is the approach that Republicans should be taking? Well, I mean, you know, it's it's an approach that has worked for a long time in politics. Uh, you know, I remember uh, when Clinton was under extreme pressure for the Lewinsky investigation, um, you know, they did two things at the same time with an awful lot of discipline. Uh, one of them was attack the investigation, attack the investigators, and the other thing was uh, talk about the booming economy uh, and talk about how that's a distraction from his job as in his role as president, and it works for him. Um, so I do think that there is, you know, there's sound political advice. It is sound political advice to say, uh, hey, Mr. President, you know, you just hit 4% economic growth. You're you know, nearing full employment. Um, when you look at the, you know, unemployment rate, uh, why not talk about that uh, at least as much <laughs> that you, as you talk about the Mueller investigation? And, you know, he does do that, but I think – and he does talk about the economy. Um, but I think, you know, if you look at some of these Twitter screeds about the investigation, what he does is he – you know, he does – he he's a little bit uh, – this might come as a shock. He's a little bit undisciplined mm, <laughs> in yes. communication. And he's got a story to tell uh, for the midterms. He's got a story to tell about judges. He's got a story to tell about the economy. He's got a story to tell about – uh, ISIS and the end of the ISIS caliphate, um, and you know those are those are very good and important things that have been accomplished. Uh, and you know I think he should be relentlessly hammering home to the American people that all that's happened in his administration. And you know, unfortunately for Republicans, he's not doing that. And so what ends up happening is I think you might see Republicans. Uh, suffering in the midterms as a result of that, because people, you know, there's a lot of people who might be happy about the economy, but who are also not happy about some of this endless drama. Now, you wrote a, a wonderful article in the Washington Post about cowards weakening sensible gun rights. Uh, the Stand Your Ground law in Florida, do you think it should be changed after that shooting in the parking lot with Michael Dredjka? Because uh, he, he's, no, uh, he's a free man, and obviously the person who pushed him to the ground is dead. Right. No, it shouldn't be changed. It should be applied, yeah. <laughs> uh, applied lawfully. And so the standard ground law, and, and this is something that gets misunderstood all the time, the standard ground law on its face does not protect Michael Dredgka, the man who killed another man for pushing him. Uh, on its face, the standard ground law has two provisions, and a lot of people have ignored this. And one provision says that if someone uses unlawful force against me short of deadly force, I can use unlawful force back. In other words, um, if someone pushes me, I can push back. If someone hits me, I can hit back. Uh, the only time I'm allowed to use deadly force under that law is if I'm reasonably uh, in fear of imminent death or grave serious bodily harm. Uh, in other words, I have to be not just actually in fear that I'm going to die. It, that fear has to be reasonable. In other words, I mean, it has to be objectively reasonable. And in this circumstance, a guy, was, he was pushed. That's what happened. And then as soon as he pulled, you know, this dredge guy, uh, guy pulled out his gun, um, the person who pushed him started backing away. Uh, that, that is not circumstances where you're in reasonable fear of death or uh, uh, great bodily harm. That is a circumstance covered by the first part of the law that says, hey, you know, if you're pushed, you can push back, not shoot. So a punch or a kick or a push there's no license to kill, and and that was what's been so totally uh, misinterpreted by that uh, Florida sheriff, and and you know what ends up happening is that Michael Dredgka begins to discredit lawful gun owners because the other side will use him as a symbol of this is what it's like with stand your ground. You discredit stand your ground laws. No, just apply apply the laws written, and the laws written doesn't protect that behavior. Uh, speaking of the application of the law, uh, your reaction to the um, uh, temporary restraining order that was issued in Seattle blocking uh, <laughs> the posting of blueprints for 3D printed guns? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't think it was possible for me to be surprised by mainstream media ignorance about guns, of gun rights. 
but I got surprised. The whole 3D gun printing uh, hysteria that erupted over the last 48 hours was unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's as if somebody, people suddenly discovered that people can make guns at home. Uh, had, they had no idea that was the case, and it's been going on since before the founding of the Republic. Um, this was judicial lawlessness, because let's be really clear about what happened. The judge blocked publication of information that's already everywhere online, that somebody could find with a few seconds of a Google search. Um, publication of, law, of information to create, law, to, law, that, or to create weapons that were not illegal. That's something that people, um, again, were completely missing. They were thinking the sky was uh, providing information on how to create uh, illegal guns. No, um, not one of the designs that were being published were for all plastic guns, which all plastics would be undetectable um, on a metal detector would be illegal and has been illegal to make an all plastic undetectable gun since 1988. This is how old, you know, the, the technology is to actually create undetectable guns. I mean, we're talking about the Reagan administration since this stuff has been banned. Um, so, so as the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said in uh, a, a couple of years ago, all of the designs that he was going to be putting online were lawful for lawful for weapons that people could lawfully own. The whole purpose of blocking them by the Obama administration was not to block them for Americans, it was to block them for access overseas. And all the Trump administration did was essentially say, well, we're going to lift this ban on sharing information, which was a prior restraint on speech, by the way. We're going to list this ban on sharing information because it does not actually um, – the, the national security interests don't outweigh the interest in the first – to protect the spread of information under the First Amendment. So this wasn't a, a gun case. This was a First Amendment case, and the rhetoric around this that somehow what was going to happen was this unprecedented access that people are going to have to undetectable firearms is completely false. Excellent uh, distillation of that issue and the associated hysteria and nothing more dangerous than when you have the media's ignorance of guns combined with the media's ignorance of the Constitution. Then you've got a real force multiplier there. So we appreciate that explanation. <laughs> David French, writer at National Review, con lawyer, best-selling author, and also the veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom. David, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy on the AM560 The Answer mobile app. Just text the word APP to 64636 to download the app today. Coming up, why France rocks. But first, partly sunny today with a shower or thunderstorm around. Just in spots, a high of 82 degrees. Tonight, clear, low of 64, and for tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, a high of 82. Let's get into the Alarm Detection System Traffic Center. Here is Jim Telemonte. And well, traffic will be very heavy in downtown Chicago later this morning when Lollapalooza op opens up for its a four-day weekend run. Also, protests planned on the north side this afternoon, heading up the uh, northbound side of Lakeshore Drive up to the area around Wrigley Field. Right now, the Edens delay free inbound. I found it's 25 minutes to get to Lake Cook. Westbound Spur has delays. Kennedy, 50 minutes, so here to downtown. Up on 39, Eisenhower. Up 54 minutes, 390 to the circle. 37 from Manhunt. Up on 41 to 390. Stevenson, 58 minutes, 355 to the drive. Ryan, 35 minutes, 95 to downtown. Tri State and the Veterans Memorial have delays in both directions. The other tollways are fine. We have a delay on southbound 53. It's heavy from Rand Road most of the way down to uh, the area around Lake Street. 355 starts. Jim Talamonte in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. If you're thinking about saving money this summer, then why not start by paying less of an interest rate on your credit card balances? It's time to refinance with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. It's an easy way to save hundreds to thousands of dollars and lower your interest rate in the process. Lightstream offers credit card con uh, consolidation loans from 5.89% with auto pay, which is lower than the average credit card rate of more than 18% APR. You can get your funds as soon as the day that you apply. It can save even more with an additional interest rate discount on top of Lightstream's already low rates. But the only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com 
slash W-I-N-D. That's lightstream.com slash W-I-N-D to get that discount. Subject to credit approval, rates include 0.5% on auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com for more info. If you're a company looking to grow your technical team and hire new exceptional candidates, turn to Monarch Technical Services. They've been leading the Chicago staffing industry for manufacturing and engineering since 1987. Monarch recruits top talent for your company by verifying skill sets using blueprint, shop map, part measurement, and CNC program exams. Their experienced skill assessment officers were once machinists themselves. That provides Monarch Monarch Technical Services the unique ability to determine specific skill sets among candidates. Monarch takes pride in every candidate they represent. Their vetting process and customer service is the best in Chicagoland. If you're a business growing your technical team and searching for exceptional talent, contact Monarch Technical Services at 847-342-1221 or online at monarchtechnical.com. And if you're interested in starting a career in manufacturing or have experience, you can also call 847-342-1221 or upload your resume at monarchtechnical.com. That's monarchtechnical.com. This is Dan Proft with 60 Seconds of Sanity for upstream-ideas.com. What a contrast, right? At the same time President Trump was stumbling through his post-game presser with Putin, which necessitated a next-day contraction retraction, former President Obama was in South Africa treating the world to his soaring rhetoric, thereby reminding us how good we have. At it. That's the D.C. press corps version of events. Unfortunately for Democrats, Obama's tawdry sentimentality and life's little instruction book maxims hold up about as well over time as do his policies. Obama got away with congenial disdain for the Bible and gun clingers, but his political progeny, not to mention his administration's apparatchiks, are not nearly as adroit. Obama's veiled invective is weak tea compared to his former CIA director's call for a firing squad. Obama's cliche-ridden claptrap lacks the appeal of Adam Schiff's Manchurian candidate conspiracy theories or a business insider deep dive on bugging soccer balls. Obama served as a veneer for the left's ugliness. Trump has unleashed it and marginalized Obama as a political asset in the process. Now Trump leads the left's parade of horribles around by their pee hats in full public view. It's messy, and Trump is sloppy, but like the 1983 Chicago White Sox, Trump is winning ugly. If you did not purchase health insurance coverage during the 2017 open enrollment, I can help you purchase a PPO health insurance plan at any time during the year. This is Tom Mirabali, your health insurance advocate and independent producer for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois and other health insurance carriers. If you are between the ages of 19 and 64, you are automatically paying for maternity coverage, whether you want the coverage or not. If you are a non-smoking 50-year-old male or female living in the city of Chicago, the monthly premium rate for a 100% tax-deductible health savings account PPO plan would be $590 per month. But I can show you how to eliminate the mandatory maternity benefit and lower your monthly premiums down to approximately $240 per month. To see if you qualify or for more information, call me, Tom Mirabali, at 630-863-3477. That's 630-863-3477. Are you a roofer? Do you have a high school degree or GED, a valid driver's license, and can pass a pre-employment drug screening? Then listen up. You can improve your quality of life, earn excellent pay with benefits including paid health and medical insurance for you and your family, and on top of that, a safe and secure retirement account. Contact the Chicagoland Roofing Council at chicagoroofing.org. That's chicagoroofing.org. They're looking for additional roofers to join the team. When you join the team, you can improve the quality of your life for you and your family, get satisfaction of working hard and earning a good living, becoming a professional roofing technician in the Qualified Apprenticeship Training Program. You get great benefits and solid representation through Roofers Local 11 Union. If you're a roofer, join the ranks and become a skilled craftsman and a professional roofing technician. Call the CRC office today and get more information at 708-449-5266. And if you need a roof, you can find a Chicagoland Roofing Council professional contractor at chicagoroofing.org. AM 560, the answer. Uh, Amy, I assume you saw the uh, Jennifer Aniston interview in InStyle magazine. Oh, I I miss it. But it's not, not just. Uh, are you the one who took the copy off my desk? Yeah, I read this when I was at the hairdresser. Uh, oh, yeah. Getting a mani pedi. Getting, getting my, a haircut. Getting my hair done. Oh, by Jennifer. They do you know four times a week. Um, Jennifer Aniston on the uh, Miss America pageant and beauty, in the modern context. Oh, I can't wait. I love the Miss America pageant is going to get rid of the swimsuit competition altogether. 
boring. Uh, you know, a swimsuit is a swimsuit body is a body in a swimsuit, no matter what that body is. It's so profound. Wow, a swimsuit <laughs> is a in a body. A swimsuit is a body in a swimsuit. A swimsuit body is a body in a swimsuit, no matter what that body is. Ain't nobody like your body. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on. This is a uh, boy. This is how she oh. shot to stardom. The kind of witty banter you can catch on Friends. It's uh, time to just stop thinking beauty is in the shape of a size four and the right butt size and the right waist size and the right measurements. It's just old. We've done it. We've been there. Let's move on. No, let's not. I, I'm not going to watch without the swimsuit competition. See? Or the evening gown competition. Boring. By the way, exactly. Aniston also said, interestingly. Yeah, she, she uh, has t- great skin. Yeah, well, she does. She uh, does. Mark Curran said that about her as well. Because of Vino. He, uh, she also said in Hollywood, she's been treated worse by women than men, even though she's experienced some sexism. Huh. Yeah, how about that? I'll put the article back on my desk. Coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer, Cheryl Atkinson will be here. But first, let's get into the newsroom. Mike Scott. Lollapalooza kicks off today at Grant Park. Suburban state rep resigns. WIND Chicago News Time, 8 o'clock. It could take months or years. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. That's how long the process could take to identify the Korean War remains in those 55 flag-draped boxes. That was the ceremony when they arrived in Hawaii. Vice President Pence was there. Our work will not be complete until all our fallen heroes are accounted for. And home. Now, the remains will go to a lab for forensic study, extracting DNA from bones and teeth and comparing it to samples given by families of missing troops. China is urging the U.S. to correct its attitude. As President Trump escalates the trade dispute, now proposing a higher rate on new tariffs, 25 percent, targeting $200 billion in more imports. The Chinese foreign minister says it's not the 19th century anymore. And these tariffs will hurt American companies. And stock futures are down on Wall Street. Markets also falling overseas. A victory in court for so-called sanctuary cities. Fox's John Deckers live at the White House. In a two-to-one decision, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals agreed with the lower court that the president's executive order threatening to cut funding for sanctuary cities was unconstitutional and exceeded the president's authority. The court found that the president does not have the power to withhold funding Congress approves. But the court also ruled that the lower court judge went too far when he blocked enforcement of President Trump's order nationwide, limiting the injunction, at least for now, to California. A lower court will now hear more arguments on whether a wider ban is warranted. Dave? John ISIS tried to infiltrate Israel. Seven suspected terrorists attempted to cross the border in the Golan Heights last night, but the Israeli military killed all seven with an aircraft strike. It's a nightmare around wildfire scorched Redding, California. Nearly 1,100 families have nothing but ashes for homes left. A week ago, this was just a you know, normal neighborhood, and now it's just utter devastation. That fire is only about a third contained, blamed for six deaths. Fox News, fair and balanced. Partly cloudy skies, 71 degrees, a little windy out there this morning, 802 on AM 560. The answer, good morning. I'm Mike Scott. An investigation continues following a deadly shooting in Maywood. Police there say Kivon Sturkey was shot in the 1800 block of South First Avenue. He died later at a nearby hospital. No arrests have been made, and again, that investigation continues. Anti-violence protesters are planning to shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive and some streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon as a march is expected to begin around 4 p.m. And uh, the marchers are expected to try to attempt to take Lakeshore Drive near Diversity before heading up to Wrigleyville. The Cubs do have a home game at uh, 7.05. A state lawmaker from the northwest suburbs is stepping down following allegations that he posted nude photographs of an ex-girlfriend on social media. Illinois Representative Nick Sauer resigned yesterday saying, Addressing the accusations is affecting his ability to serve. Politico published a report claiming the Lake Barrington Republican created a fake Instagram account filled with nude photographs of the woman in order to lure men into graphic discussions. Chicago sports. Cole Hamels allowed one unearned run, struck out nine over five innings. As the uh, Cubs over the Pirates 9-2 in Pittsburgh. Royals drubbed the White Sox 10-5. Bears play the first of five preseason games tonight. The uh, uh, Chicago takes on the Ravens in the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. 8.03, time for the AM560 Business Beat. 
From the Fox Business Network, here's Ginny Casola. From the Fox Business Network, meal kit company Blue Apron Holdings continues to lose money. It also paid more for marketing in the recent quarter. Blue Apron's number of customers declined 24% from a year ago. So far, Market Watch says Blue Apron and HelloFresh, the two biggest publicly traded meal kit companies, have failed to turn a profit. Americans have been eating more tacos and chicken. Yum Brand's business was better than expected in the spring quarter. Yum is the parent company of Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut. Fidelity is launching two new index funds that don't charge management fees. They're being called the Fidelity Zero Index Funds. Fidelity is making the move to compete with Vanguard, Charles Schwab, and BlackRock. The Dow Jones Industrial is down 81 on Wednesday. The Nasdaq was up 35. The S&P dropped three. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Ginny Cosola. It's 8.04, a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM 560. As press secretary for President Trump, Sean Spicer had a front row seat to history. And in his new book, he reveals details about what really happened behind the scenes during the campaign and the early days of the administration. On Wednesday, August 8th, Sean Spicer is coming to Chicago. Meet Sean Spicer and get a copy of his new book, The Briefing, at the Museum of Broadcast Communications. Tickets are absolutely free. Thanks to healthinsurancementors.com. Get your tickets at 560theanswer.com slash briefing. That's 560theanswer.com slash briefing. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event. And now, while selection is best, it's the best time to buy. With amazing offers across a full lineup of Ford vehicles, now is the time to make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand. Stop by a local Ford store or shop online at buyfordnow.com because there is no better time than right now to get behind the wheel of a new Ford during the Ford Summer Sales Event. The Ford Summer Sales Event is here. Right now, get 0% APR financing for 60 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on the 2018 Echo Sport. Best-selling claim based on 2017 calendar year sales. Not all buyers will qualify for Ford credit financing. 60 months at $16.67 per month for 1,000 finance regardless of down payment. For all offers, take new retail delivery from an authorized Ford dealer stock by 831.18. See dealer or go to buyfordnow.com for qualifications and details. It is 8.06. Let's get an update on the roads in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center with Jim. Thanks, Mike. Southbound 53 has improved a bit, but still heavy from Rand Road to Kirchhoff. Southbound Veterans Memorial totally has delays. St. Charles at 22nd. Northbound slows 70 hits to North Avenue. Tri-State delays southbound from 21 to Bradley Road and from Dempster to Irving Park. Northbound 90 hits to 31st and from the Reagan to at Lawrence. But Adams still, we got a jam. Beverly Road to Barrington Road. Crash to the right lane. Eden's 19 minutes. Lake Cook to Montrose. Half on 25. Kennedy, 46 minutes. O'Hare to downtown. 34 from Montrose. 30 in the Express. Half on 39 to O'Hare. Eisenhower, 54 minutes. 390 to downtown. Half on 41. Stevenson, 46 minutes. 355 to Lakeshore Drive. Half on 37. Ryan is 35 minutes, 95th to downtown. Traffic service and Positive Coaching Alliance. Got issues with youth or high school sports? Positive Coaching Alliance can help. PCA, a national nonprofit, offers more than 1,000 free online resources for coaches, parents, students, and administrators. Visit PCADevZone.org. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast. From the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center, here's meteorologist Kevin Snyder. Today, partly sunny with a shower or a thunderstorm around high 82, mainly clear night, low 64. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, high 83, mainly clear night, low 67. Hot day Saturday with sunshine and patchy clouds, high 92. I'm Kevin Snyder for AM560, The Answer. 71 right now, blue skies. Next news coming up at 8.30. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by On Target Radio. From firearms and Second Amendment rights to personal freedoms and government intrusions, listen here Sunday nights at 9. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer.
Good morning, Dan and Amy, and uh, this discussion about civility and elevating the discourse uh, coming out of the latest Trump rally in Tampa earlier this week and just the general back and forth between uh, President Trump and uh, the D.C. press corps that's been going on since, uh, well, basically since Trump announced that he was a candidate for president of the United States. Uh, for more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by Cheryl Atkinson, who's the host of Full Measure. Full Measure is uh, in 43 million households on 162 Sinclair broadcast group stations, including uh, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, uh, all of them. Sunday mornings, uh, also live streams uh, at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Fullmeasure.news is the uh, website. Oh, she's also the author of the book, The Smear, How Shady Political Operatives and Fake News Control What You See what you think and how you vote. Cheryl Atkinson, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, I wanted to start uh, not with Jim Acosta, um, but um, how about uh, the other side of this equation a little bit? Uh, the uh, recently uh, minted uh, New York Times editorial board member, Sarah Jong, who in her Twitter account, uh, it's been unearthed, has uh, offered, New York Times editorial board, offered tweets like, um, it's kind of sick how much joy I get out of being cruel to old white men. Uh, Dumas effing white people making up, uh, marking up the internet with their opinions like dogs pissing on fire hydrants. Oh, that's ladylike. I just can't re realize why I can't stand watching Breaking Bad or Battlestar Galactica. The premise of both is just white people being miserable. White people uh, have stopped breeding. You'll all go extinct soon. This was my plan all along. I mean, just like bizarre juvenile stuff and she's on the new york times editorial board now the the gray lady uh w that we're supposed to have so much respect for because we're told so by the new york times well maybe even more that so many new york times articles now bleed news in with opinion she's on the editorial board so i understand your objections but at least that's the editorial board yeah uh, there are news articles that regularly um, state things as if facts that they don't know to be facts that they certainly didn't witness firsthand but they're not attributing that give opinions the reporter's own opinion mixed in with the story which you know when i went to journalism school we were told taught how to avoid that so i think maybe even that's a more worrisome trend in a way what about uh, Jim Acosta being, you know, she's kind of borderline harassed at the, at the Trump rally and a number of places where he goes? Do you think that they crossed the line? Because when I was, yeah, in journalism school, you just reported the facts on both sides of a story, possibly a third side of a story, but you never inserted your opinion. How has Jim Acosta possibly brought this upon himself? You know, I worked at CNN in 1990 to 93, when we as anchors were summarizing an appearance by the president or what it, what not, I mean, I wasn't, didn't even have to be told this as a young journalist. We simply stuck to the facts. We would summarize by saying, you know, the president just spoke and briefly said X, Y, and Z. Uh, the last one I saw, Anderson Cooper, who's not a straight journalist, you know, he's more of an editorial person, he came out and immediately declared it to be one of the most, I don't know, disgusting performances ever by an American president. Just it's a whole different organization than when I was there. I've never seen Jim Acosta's show or even, I, I just don't watch CNN, so if a clip crosses my path, I don't know much about him. But I would say in general, we in the news, I think our, our skin is way too thin. We're criticizing people on a daily basis, and in some cases using some very editorial remarks against the subjects of the people we report on, and yet when we get some flack for the sometimes obvious mistakes and bias that we make and that we have, we kind of act like it's the end of the world and that just we can't stand this. And I think we need to have thicker skin. Uh, how would you assess the uh, D.C. press corps coverage of the uh, Mueller investigation to this point? I think there's been some good coverage. Um, and I think that there's been a pretty tight lid on a lot of that investigation. There's been some leaks and some incorrect leaks about things. Um, so, so from that standpoint, there's been a lot of misreporting by tangential reporters who said, for example, that, uh, you know, Manafort was going to cut a deal and he was going to give the goods on Trump. Obviously, none of that turned out to be the case. But um, there's been, you know, some good reporting, too. I think that we're just being led to dig sometimes in the wrong direction to the exclusion of other news that may be bigger news. 
So there are other sides and other facets to this story, such as whatever happened to the happened to the unmasking investigation of high-ranking intel and political officials that were doing the unthinkable. People don't understand how rare this is supposed to be and how um, how it's not supposed to happen hardly at all, which is American citizens surveilled by our intel agencies and then their information saved and then their names revealed. So they're supposed to be so-called masked for their own protection when that happens. Um, this was happening at a rate in 2016 that one official alone was unmasking names or requesting it on a near daily basis. That means hundreds of Americans. So I think this is a bigger story we're not getting enough reporting on, and that's the biggest fallout I see from perhaps overcoverage of some of these other issues that are receiving plenty of attention, yet it's, it's as if there's nothing else happening out there. Well, what is happening with the unmasking? I mean, where does that investigation stand? Well, from what I can tell, um, it's, it's stalled. I mean, this was something that members of Congress were very hot on in early in the Trump presidency as this became revealed. And to me, it's one of the most important and provable alleged possible crimes because there's a paper trail of who requests unmasking, of what reason they want the names unmasked. And Samantha Power, um, who's a former high-ranking official, claimed that someone else was making unmasking requests, not her for a lot of those occasions, which, again, I think would be a crime or a possible crime. And apparently no one's digging into that. You know, I've, I've asked for updates. I've been told it's on the back burner. And I'm not sure why, because I think this goes to something that's been done 10, 20 years, perhaps, it, by our intel agencies, um, spying on Americans improperly, improper gathering of political dirt or blackmail material against political officials. These are the kinds of allegations that could be exposed if we dug hard in these other areas, I think. Yeah, your, your point about editorial discretion, the stories that uh, news outlets choose to report upon, and then because of sort of the groupthink mentality that exists, it seems to me, you have um, news organizations become cheerleaders for a particular outcome they want in this topic area they're all covering. Like you uh, did a, a piece on uh, uh, the Me Too movement in your latest episode of Full Measure, and um, – uh, and that seems to me a good example of this is like there are obviously there are legitimate uh, claims of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, sexual assault. And Harvey Weinstein's under criminal indictment and by all appearances should absolutely be um, with Les Moonves, others, Bill Cosby, et cetera, et cetera. You know, but then there's also this sort of um, trying to uh, kind of get in on the Me Too action and blurring the lines of distinction between people who really need to be investigated for uh, egregious and, in some cases, criminal behavior versus uh, the same level of ink and uh, opprobrium directed at somebody who made uh, an off-color joke on the set of some TV show. And instead of providing texture, you're, just, you're trying to kind of like out pro me to the uh, competitive news outlet. Yeah, I'm trying to think off narrative as often as possible because even when there are legitimate narratives, there's often more sides and more facets that aren't getting coverage, I find, in today's – today, you could call us Me Too in the media because we're all just copying each other yeah. on the same couple of stories. And the reason I did that story, you can see a replay at fullmeasure.news right now, is because that was the most talked about thing among my friends, men and women, which is, well, what constitutes, you know – misbehavior. I mean, sometimes, yes, it's unethical or it's bad, but it's not criminal. It's not rape necessarily. And it's all being discussed, you know, in one big lump in some cases. And there are false accusations being levied um, in this environment against people because someone can be easily destroyed. If you just say, you know, as the subject of my story said, two credible accusations is enough to destroy someone. And he said, in today's environment, one is. So these things can be weaponized improperly in addition to the re very real cases of you know, sexual abuse. Now, when you worked at CBS for years, and I'm sure you've met Les Moonves, did, he, uh, did you know anything or hear any rumblings about him with bad behavior toward women? Uh, not really. I mean, I just think in general the there are upper-level bosses and things you hear. I mean, he ended up dating, I guess, while married one of the – 
CBS employees who he later married. There was that kind of stuff going on. He was never, I was, didn't spend a lot of time around him, and he was not inappropriate toward me, and I didn't hear any specific stories about him, no. All right. She is Cheryl Atkinson, uh, celebrated, award-winning investigative journalist, host of Full Measure. Fullmeasure.news is the website. Uh, you can also catch it on uh, Sinclair Networks around the country. Off the uh, book, The Smear, How Shady Political Operatives and Fake News Control What You See, What You Think, and How You Vote. Cheryl, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. You're listening to Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM 560. The Answer. Coming up next, the campus beat, the campus beat, the campus beat. Yeah, the campus beat. Uh, I did sing in a cover band, though. Or uh, what's the what's the name of the group? Bananarama. Uh, banana- oh. No, not Bananarama. Um, the Go. Busting it. The Go Go's. Go Go's. Yeah, the Go Go's. It was a Go Go's cover band. It was called QB and the Janitors, and I was a janitorette. Yeah. Who are you? Who did you try to emulate from the Go Go's? Oh, Belinda Carlisle. Uh, hello. Poor woman, Belinda Carlisle. Walk like an Egyptian. Too. That's Bangles. We did that too. We were Bangles cover band and a Go Go's cover band. Okay. I understand now why that band didn't. You know what? Off. Maybe I'll treat you and some of the listeners to some of our old videos. What I mean, about the audio from the videos. Um, what about Bananarama? Did you do any Bananarama songs? All yeah. the girl band songs. All the girl band songs. What about TLC? Don't go chasing waterfalls. Yeah. I mean, left eye is spinning in her grave. Yeah, she died in a Honduran car accident, right? Yeah. That's the name of my high school band, Honduran Car Accident. <laughs> Today, partly sunny. Can't rule out a passing shower or thunderstorm. Hopefully, one will hit Lakeshore Drive around 4 o'clock near Belmont. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have a, a high of 82 degrees. Let's get into the alarm detection systems traffic said tour. What band were you in, Jim Telemonte? Oh, good question, Amy. Were you in the alarm <laughs> detection systems there, traffic bingo, band? Bingo. You got it. The alarm detection systems traffic center band. It's a one-man show. You couldn't be hoping for that shower, though, to disrupt the planned protest this afternoon. Uh, affecting northbound Lakeshore Drive between Fullerton and Belmont that may shut down Lakeshore Drive. That's what protesters are saying they plan to do. And then also a closure uh, off the drive from Belmont to Clark and Addison, where the Cubs are supposed to play this afternoon. Plus, you have Lollapalooza starting up, so it could be a cruel summer traffic day. Eden's 19 minutes, Lake Cook to Montrose, up on 28, Kennedy. 46 minutes, O'Hare to downtown, up on 29. The Eisenhower, 54 minutes, 390 to downtown, up on 44. Stevenson, 56 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. It's 37 outbound. Ryan, 38 minutes, 95th to downtown. Eastbound Adams, Tollway, I-90. The jam, Beverly Road to Barrington Road, where a crash just cleared out of the way. Jim Talamonte in the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center. Are you tired of working for someone else making them rich? Do you have a positive attitude and an entrepreneur mindset? And are you willing to take real risk? Then you're in luck. The NV Real Estate Company has been perfecting the art of wholesaling properties for cash. And when you call now, they'll send you a free copy of their new kit, The Hidden Treasures in Wholesaling Property. In this kit, you'll see their wholesaling formula for locating, evaluating, and flipping properties for profit in any area. You'll also learn how to potentially access discounted real estate and find the right funding partners for that property to wholesale. Call 1-800-587-0182 now to get your free wholesaling kit. Call 800-587-0182 now and get free admission to live training in your area, which includes a free meal, a free smartwatch, and free USB drive loaded with his training information. Call 800-587-0182. That's 800-587-0182 now and get your free kit today. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies in a Capsule. I've got uh, enclosing spondylitis, which is a arthritic disease, calcification of the major joints in the spine, and I just don't have the pain that I used to have. It's really kind of uh, amazing. Balance of Nature has been an amazing product. Uh, I've recommended it to literally hundreds. I'm a pastor. And I've said, y'all, just try it. Give, it. give it a month. Give it a try. And so hopefully they have. But uh, it's, it's an amazing product. And uh, the neatest thing is when you first open up that bottle and you can smell the fruits and vegetables. I, every time I open one, I just get a big kick out of that. When you call, use discount code CHICAGO. 
and we'll take 35% off your first preferred set of fruits and veggies and have them shipped to you free. Call 800-246-8751. That's 1-800-246-8751 or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. At ACE, we believe there's nothing better than helping kids. That's why we've been proud to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals for over 25 years. This Friday through Sunday, get our five-gallon bucket and 20% off almost anything that fits inside when you donate $5 to support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. And like ACE, CMN hospitals are local, so the money you donate helps kids near you. ACE is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Offer valid at participating stores on regular price merchandise only. Additional conditions and exclusions apply. See store for details. On the streets of Miami, speed is the law. So when a corn dog goes after the wrong girl, oh, heartburn. one man will bring her Tums Ultra Strength. I'm on my way. Don't get wrecked by heartburn. Nothing works faster than Tums. Your mustard's fast, but my Tums are faster. Oh. And with Tums on the go rolls, it's never been easier to leave heartburn behind. You did it. Yeah. You gonna finish that corn dog? Tums Ultra Strength, available in a store near you. With the recent rains and wet weather, Permaseal is working very hard to help every homeowner in Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana area. But we need your help. Hi, I'm Roy Spencer, president of Permaseal Basement Systems. We're hiring in all departments, especially sales, customer service, and installation. We're looking for people with a great work ethic, who have ambition, a positive attitude, want to learn new skills, and have a desire to make the world a better place. Sound like you? Then go to permaseal.net slash careers to apply today. No experience needed. We will teach you to become an expert in waterproofing and foundation repairs. Even if you're not presently looking for another job, I'd encourage you to consider working for Permaseal. We offer great training, year-round work, tremendous growth opportunities, and a great, fun work environment. To apply, go to permaseal.net slash careers. If you're looking for a career change or a dry basement, you know who to call. Permaseal, 800-421-7325 or go to permaseal.net. Permaseal. AM560, the answer. They got the beat, the campus beat, the campus beat. Yeah, the campus beat. Justin, I, I should have sang that. Justin, also a poor woman full into Carlisle. He's still a little pitchy. I don't know. I got to take him to those voice lessons. Uh, all right, our uh, latest installment of Campus Speed, a study from uh, Harvard researchers that will appear in uh, a magazine. I know you're an avid uh, consumer In of. touch? No, what? Uh, Journal of Behavior Therapy and Experimental Psychiatry. I, I love that one. You're normally a subject in the articles, but you also read them. Uh, the study doesn't deal with uh, trigger warnings, but it, uh, it doesn't conclude that trigger warnings deal anything uh, – close to a fatal blow in terms of emotional resilience. But uh, these Harvard researchers do find that trigger warnings, now if you're not well versed in the Orwellian newspeak of the day, trigger warnings, which are ubiquitous on college campuses and it, in, increasingly in you know big business, telling somebody they're about to view material they could find objectionable, emotionally difficult, mm. that's the trigger warning. So I guess there should be a trigger warning for every segment in this show. The trigger warnings um, is what uh, the researchers looked into. Two groups, both groups read passages from literature depicting scenes of graphic violence were asked to gauge their anxiety levels. The passages came with trigger warnings for one of the groups. For the other group, they did not. Here's the uh, takeaway, and they're you know, restrained in their conclusions, but it's sort of what you would intuit. Trigger warnings appear to increase anxiety among subjects who had answered they believed words could hurt them. Trigger warnings seemed to justify the anxiety the participants were feeling and made them somewhat more likely to think their anxiety could mature into full-blown PTSD. You know, like that woman who, that uh, New York County uh, board who member who got, got a parking a speeding ticket, ticket, who freaked out. Speeding ticket. Ah, PTSD! Right. Scream that at the officer. She would, yeah, she would be in this subject group. Trigger warnings may in inadvertently undermine some aspects of emotional resilience. Yeah. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Mm -hmm. It may undermine your ability to be a functioning adult, basically, is what they're saying, emotional resilience. Um, so I'm not going to give a trigger warning here. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yeah. 
let me introduce you to University of Georgia Professor Charles Davis. He's the dean of the College of Journalism and Mass Communication at uh, Georgia. He tweeted this out. I went to high school with GOP Gov candidate Brian Kemp. We played YMC ball from uh, YMCA ball from childhood. Politics be damned, he's a nice guy, always was, kind to a fault. He's a friend, always has been, and will be when we're older and grayer. That's how all this should work, people. Are you okay? Um, I'm, I'm okay. Well, you, you heard what he said. He, he, this is a professor at UGA saying that the Republican candidate for governor in Georgia is a nice guy. Did you not hear me? I, I heard you. Did you. Do you know how outrageous that is? Why is that outrageous? Because all these college kids said so, and they. Uh, oh my gosh! They, they sh- did. They shamed uh, oh. the the they egged dean. His house? They they shamed the dean of the College of Journalism at University of Georgia into apologizing for what he wrote. He should not apologize. He I'd, should stand his ground. I'd like to apologize to anyone oh offended my by my tweet shout out to brian kemp it was ill-timed right after the primary he won and poorly written it was it wasn't poorly, poorly written. written it was just from the heart i've read and learned so much from you all and will endeavor to be more thoughtful so basically what he's trying to say is i want to keep my job and i hope you don't drive me out of this university i think that's a fair translation yeah here's what he learned can you send him a p hat maybe a size small because I think it would look great on his dome there. Here's what he learned from all this the feedback. Oh, yeah. Let me give you an example. One response to his, Brian Kemp is a nice guy. You're a straight white man. Of course he was nice and kind mm. to you. Racists are generally nice to their own kind. Oh. Why don't you say what you really mean? Politics be damned. You never vote for a black woman. I would much rather vote for the white racist. That's the kind of thoughtful response he got from his students that helped to inform his view and led to his apology and retraction. Campus beat, beating intellectual integrity out of the adults, alleged adults at least. Coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. All right, you want to stay tuned for this. If you haven't seen this documentary yet, you got to see it. I'm so glad I did. All the Queen's horses. Watched it last week. So DePaul professor uh, Kelly Richmond Pope produced this documentary on the $53 million embezzlement case, Rita Grunwell in Dixon, Illinois. It's a great documentary to exp- to answer the obvious question, how could this happen? And she does a good job. We're going to talk to her about it at 838. But first, let's go into the newsroom. Here's Mike Scott. Partly cloudy skies, 71 degrees. Day three of the Paul Manafort trial will begin shortly. President Trump's former campaign manager is being tried for multiple counts of tax and banking fraud in northern Virginia. Federal appeals court says... The Trump administration's threat to block so-called sanctuary cities from getting federal grants is unconstitutional. The Ninth Circuit ruled against threatening letters the Justice Department sent in February to some local governments. The destruction from 17 wildfires continues to burn in California. The deadly car fire in Redding in northern California has burned more than 112,000 acres. Six have died. The search for a missing University of Iowa student, Molly Tibbetts, It's taken a twist, and it's taken authorities outside of Iowa. NBC's Blake McCoy is on the scene this morning in Kearney, Missouri. Overnight, NBC News confirming police responded to a possible sighting of Molly at this truck stop in western Missouri late last week. It remains unclear if it resulted in any leads. Now, video footage was reviewed and statements were taken from witnesses even before police alerted authorities in Iowa of their investigation. Kearney, Missouri is about 25 miles north of Kansas City. The 20-year-old disappeared July 18th. An investigation continues in Maywood after the death of Kevon Sturkey, shot in the 1800 block of South 1st Avenue. Anti-violence protesters are planning to shut down a portion of Lakeshore Drive in Chicago and streets around Wrigley Field this afternoon. Willie Wilson denying accusations. He's trying to buy votes in his bid to become Chicago mayor. The businessman discussed the accusations yesterday while handing out close to $100,000 to Cook County residents. Today is not about political for me. You know, this is a day for trying to help, you know, and that's exactly what I'm I'm doing. The Illinois Campaign for Political Reform has filed a complaint against Wilson. Cubs over the Pirates 9-2. Royals double up the White Sox 10-5. 
Bears in the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio tonight. The news a service of Compassion International. For five quarters a day, you can sponsor a child through Compassion International. It's pocket change to you, life-changing for a child in need. Be part of the change and become a sponsor now at Compassion.com slash radio, Compassion.com slash radio. 834, a check of traffic and weather on the way next on AM560. Mike Gallagher wants an end to the Russia investigation. Asking about the Mueller investigation, he wants it over with. Rudy Giuliani was quoted as saying that the president's attitude is enough already. Somebody asked Giuliani, a reporter, oh, is he going to fire Mueller? No, he doesn't want to fire Mueller. He wants it to be over with. Get it over with. There's no collusion. Give it up. The Mike Gallagher Show, weekdays at 9, right before Dennis Prager at 11 on AM 560. The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by Papa Nicholas Coffee. Papa Nicholas Coffee, roasted fresh daily in Batavia, Illinois. How do you manage risk? True North Companies has a team of trusted advisors concentrated in employee benefits, workers' comp, and property casualty insurance that focus on offering innovative solutions to meet the needs of companies throughout the Midwest. True North's unique process, the Enterprise Navigator, goes beyond simply placing your insurance. The team works with companies like yours to evaluate compliance, manage risk, and help you seek financial savings by addressing education, finance transfer, technology, wellness, and claims management. Some companies calculate risk better than others. Do what you can to ensure all factors of the equation are accounted for by working with True North. To learn more or to request a no-obligation risk management assessment, visit truenorthcompanies.com or call 847-699-1400. True North Companies, unique services, innovative solutions. True North Companies proudly sponsors AM560's charity golf outing, benefiting the 100 Club of Chicago, providing financial relief and college scholarships to families of first responders who lost their lives in the line of duty. 835, a check on the roads this morning. In the Alarm Detection Systems Traffic Center, here's Jim Telemonte. Thanks, Mike and Elgin Shales. Parkway is closed in Chicago Street and US 20 due to a crash there. The Eden's fought in bad outbound. It's 25 minutes to Lake Cook. And there are spur delays from the Eden's to Waukegan Road. Inbound Kennedy, heavy Irving Park to Washington. 46 minutes, O'Hare to downtown. 36 from Montrose, 32 on the Express. Outbound 12 minutes to Montrose, 32 to the airport. But Eisenhower, 54 minutes, 390 to downtown, 37 from Mannheim. Outbound 39 to 390. Stevenson, 56 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive, outbound 37. Ryan, 35 minutes, 95th, uh, 95th to downtown. Tri-State southbound, still 137 to Bradley. And Dempster to Irving Park. Northbound 95th to 31st, and from the Reagan to the way to Lawrence, Veterans Memorial, southbound heavy, St. Charles to 22nd. Northbound 75th to North Avenue and Army Trail to 290. Southbound 53 is delays Peloton to Kirchhoff. Traffic answers when you need them most. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center, partly sunny. An afternoon shower thunderstorm is possible today. High 82, currently 72. Next news coming up at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. Listen to AM560 on your mobile device. Now available on iHeartRadio. Online at iHeartRadio.com. Get your free tickets to meet Sean Spicer in Chicago on August 8th. Go to 560theanswer.com slash briefing. Good morning, Dan and Amy. So this was a case uh, out of Dixon, Illinois, that made international news because it's just so unfathomable. Rita Crunwell, who was essentially basically the city of Dixon's CFO, embezzled $53 million from the town's coffers over 20 years. $53 million. And so the... The question that every Dixon resident <laughs> had and yeah. everybody who got wind of this story uh, some years ago when she ultimately was discovered and uh, indicted and convicted, sent yeah. to prison for t- nearly 20 years. Caught by a co-worker. Yeah. Well, uh, h- h- how do you get away with that? How can you steal that much money from a small town like Dixon? And how could you do that to Ronald Reagan? 
That was the other yes. question. Yes. Um, but uh, but really, how, the how, how do you do that? How does that happen? And uh, that question is explored in some detail, and it's explained very well uh, in this uh, documentary, All the Queen's Horses, about Rita Cronwell and this embezzlement story out of Dixon. The uh, documentarian is a uh, associate professor of accounting. I think she's a CPA herself, Kelly Richmond Pope. She's at DePaul University, but uh, you know maybe she's going to turn into one of these celebrated documentaries because this is really good. You want to check this out. Yeah. Um, you can get it on Netflix and yeah. you can get it on demand. Just pay twelve ninety nine. But if you are a Netflix subscriber, you can watch it. Yeah, that's where I watch it, Netflix. Yeah, it's it's really about good. an hour long and it is fascinating. It's, it, she breaks it down <laughs> nicely so you can you know, kind of follow along. And There's a lot of um, feedback from financial professionals but also townspeople. Uh, the residents of Dixon. So I thought that was interesting to and get like, their perspective. And I like the graphs she used to explain where the money went and the accounts that were set up. That explained it in, in such a, a wonderful way. It was a little bit like um, how... I mean, like Schoolhouse Rock a little bit, but it worked for me. Well, I was going to say Big Short, where it wasn't a naked woman in a tub, but it was <laughs> explaining how this could have happened in, uh, in straightforward terms. Uh, we're pleased to be joined by that documentarian and uh, accounting professor, Kelly Richmond Pope. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And good morning. Good morning. And so... Um, uh, obviously, as an accounting professional, you were you, the, the interest in this story is uh, straightforward. What uh, what prompted you to uh, take the time to try to answer that question that everybody wanted the answer to? Well, I think um, what prompted me is I'm a natural teacher at heart, so I teach uh, my students with a lot of film and TV. So. It may be odd to hear an accounting class where you're watching movies and TV and, hmm. and all that kind of stuff, but that's one of the ways that I teach. And so when I first read about the story in the Chicago Tribune, I, like I'm sure everybody else, was just shocked. One, how does a person do this? Two, how does this amount of money not end up missing? And I, it just intrigued me, and I just started going back and forth to Dixon doing these interviews about almost six years ago. And here we are today. Wow. Now, the city's auditor was to blame. How did she befriend them so much that they didn't even question her accounting tactics? Well, um, there was a pretty close relationship between their audit firm, audit partner, and Rita. And, um, you know, she played on their softball team. And um, they had um, a very close relationship with the city because they did uh, a lot of their monthly routine transactions. Um, but one of the things that we teach when we're talking to a student is that an audit isn't designed to find fraud, so not that you can't find it. So every transaction and every invoice and everything is not always reviewed because you take a random sample. So it's possible that things can be overlooked or missed. But this case is a lot more egregious because of the amount and, and the way that she did it should have been obvious. Uh, yeah. 179 dummied up invoices that were not particularly good counterfeits. Right. And, and by itself, that sounds like a lot, right? But when you think about a city over a 20 year period, just think about the number of invoices that are probably generated over that time period. So when you say 179, 179 is a big number if we're just talking about one day. But think about, I can't even imagine the number of invoices that they actually had over that time period. So you would just think that things can get lost in the shuffle. Now, these invoices, some of them were of large amounts. So one would think that the auditor would have reviewed the legitimacy of some of these invoices, especially the larger ones. But it slipped through the cracks. But there was a structural problem, and you point this out in the documentary. The structural problem was the auditor's were, uh, and the analogy you used, both cooking the food and reviewing the, their cooking. And, uh, and that was the conflict, right? Right, right. You can't, you can't review your own work and, and think that you're going to be um, unbiased. Most of us can't do that. What I found fascinating, too, is that the, the nearby town of Sterling, their officials there wrote the mayor, I, I believe, a, a letter saying, we have $8 million in surplus and you have $43 million deficit. What, what's going on? And they, the mayor still didn't do anything. I know that he's, he didn't run for re-election. He, he passed away. Um, but what, what, what could he have done differently? Well, I think um, what's interesting about that letter, um, it's almost like if Burger King sent McDonald's a warning sign. 
when McDonald's listened to it. And so you have these two rival towns, not, 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 and I say rival for lack of a better word, but you have these two towns that are right next door to each other that in some regards um, compete, if you will. And so this letter comes, and, and would you would you listen to it? And so I think that that was a red flag, but like the research shows, there's a lot of red flags are overlooked. So um, the, the city manager of Sterling actually sent the letter, and it went to the city council, but um, they just really disregarded it, which, again, um, perhaps if it had come from a resident, a Dixon resident, maybe it would have received more attention. But just think about if your a, a quasi-competitor sends you some information, how trustworthy do you think that information really would be? And, and uh, the, you know, the, one of the questions that's just sort of a, um, an everyman question is how does she get to take all this money and spend all this money, and nobody says, boy, Rita's doing real well for uh, just this municipal salary she's got. Um, she had this huge uh, horse stable, 400 quarter horses, 400. Yeah, to, to the tune, it costs $200,000 a month to, to, feed, to, to maintain feed them. them. Yeah. Um, so all of this going on, she had a nice house, in-ground pool, she wore, wore nice jewelry. Oh, and but but it was it was interesting the way that it's presented in the documentary. It's it's presented as very reasonable. Townspeople thought well, there were stories about oh she had a rich boyfriend or oh she uh, had inherited a bunch of money from family or rich family, and um, and and uh, and you otherwise trusted her. And so you gave her the benefit of the doubt and trust, and then she came up with a story. And people don't want to pry into other people's business, so this kind of mm-hmm. took it at face value. So it, it you know. It, it wasn't like they're oh these are just country rubes and they were buffaloed by this uh, mastermind. It is sort of reasonable that people wouldn't be as inquisitive about her on the outside as they were not. Right, absolutely, because the the, the, the there were questions and she answered them. And so, what were you going to do? Um, say, well, show me your bank statement. Right. You know, like you couldn't do that. You you, you asked the question, she gave you an answer. And you really just sort of have to move on from that. And she really gave some good answers because most of those answers are – you can't prove it. She could have had an investor or she could have had um, Campbell Soup's dividends. Like those are things that she could have had. But if she said that to you, are you really going to follow up and say, okay, well, show me the dividend, dividend statement? <laughs> yeah, is, she, right, right. is she really related to somebody from Campbell Soup, though, or was that made up? Is that true? No, that was actually um, Kathy Swanson's father worked for Campbell Soup. So that was a borrowed story oh. from Kathy's wife. So we oh. learned that um, We learned that after, okay. after the fact. Well, um, all yeah. right, speaking of after, are, is there going to be a follow-up to this? Because I want to know, th- did you finally sell the property? I know I saw that amazing auction that they had where they auctioned off her horses and leather saddles that were very unique. Um, where does that stand? So all those things are auctions, so they're in the, the hands of the wonderful people that purchased all those things and gave that money back to the city. Um, the properties were sold. All the horses were sold. Um, so you asked, is there going to be a follow-up, like a part two to all the clean choices? <laughs> is that what you mean? Yeah. Um, you know, there would have to be some um, a new story. So there were a couple people that um, I always wanted to talk to. And, if, and when you watch the film, um, things that are not there are things that I would love to know the um, impact that this case had on the equestrian industry. And so, mm. um, and who knows, maybe Rita will call me and she want to talk and, and put her story out there. So if she does, Rita, come find me because I'm happy to talk to you. That maybe would be a great follow up. <laughs> maybe she'll uh, embezzle all the funds from the prison commissary or something, and you can have a, a follow up story. Um, the the fifty three million dollars she stole, and then the ju- there was a civil judgment against her for another fifty three million dollars. Now, uh, as Amy mentioned, so there's obviously federal government seizes all the property, auctions and off, but that doesn't come to fifty three million. Then there was a civil suit against the uh, town's auditors and, and Fifth Third Bank and the bank where the secret account was that she was funneling money to. So kind of uh, all in, where does Dixon and Dixon tax, where do Dixon taxpayers stand with the $53 million that was stolen from them and the judgment for their benefit? So after, after um, the civil suit and after the selling of her auctions and paying the lawyer's fees and all that good stuff, the, um, the city ended up with uh, $40 million, which is really good. And in most fraud cases, you know, people 
don't recover that kind of money. So they ended up um, not bad off. Although, so they recovered forty million. Although a thirteen million dollar hit, even spread over twenty years, is a is a pretty big number for a small town like Dixon, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the interesting thing too is how the prosecutors presented uh, the evidence against her um, uh, in the sentencing hearing, uh, where they uh, they mirror or they uh, 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 put together what she was doing and what she was spending with her, the money she stole versus what the city of Dixon was doing and having to cut budgets and lay people off and, and because of the money, the money that wasn't there because it was in Rita Crunwell's bank account. I thought that was an interesting way, and, and ultimately it must have been persuasive to the judge because she basically got the max sentence. Sure. You know, I think it, it's, it's really telling um, when you see those, those, the way we laid it out in the documentary and the way that the graph shows it really brings the human aspect in of what these crimes do. And so I think that's important for people to understand is it's not just money, especially when it's taxpayer dollars. These are dollars from, you know, hardworking citizens. And so when someone feels that, it has an impact, you know, whether people aren't getting their salaries or people aren't getting their benefits or, or police aren't getting the equipment that they need to, to service the town. So there's a lot that happens, and I think that that graph really – walks you through the years of the, the human impact that this crime had on the town and also you know all the infrastructure projects that were supposed to be happening that that never they never got to it right uh with respect to um the takeaways for financial professionals um it was interesting to get uh, the perspectives of some you know partners at price waterhouse and and likewise about this uh, auditor for the city of Dixon because this wasn't some fly by night operation. This they used the local representatives of a big national auditing firm, and so it, you know the takeaways in the industry for future accounting professionals. Well, I think the, the takeaway first um, that when you have when you're on a board or you have a fiscal responsibility, um, you need to understand a basic under, your basic understanding of financial statements because you have that duty. And so I think that it's always dangerous to just assume that your finance person is the only person that should know how things work. And I think anybody that has a fiduciary role, whether it's in a for-profit or a non-profit, um, you should be able to know enough about finance just to ask a, a good question. And you don't have to know the answer, but you can just you just need to ask. And I think far too often what we see in these groups is once you find that finance person, you just leave them alone and you let them have all the responsibility. And I think that's dangerous because a lot of people just don't like dealing with numbers. But when you when you feel that way, you make yourself vulnerable. And I think that the structure of Dixon really made Vita far more powerful than she needed to be. But but people that were that were a part of running the town needed to feel um, that they were comfortable with financial statements. So I think the takeaway is take an accounting call. You know, read a, read a just a basic book just so you don't feel intimidated when you're looking at these these numbers on a page because they do tell a story and it's important for all of us to be looking. Yeah, and if you see a, a neighbor who works for the village government uh, with a $2 million dollar RV in her driveway all of a sudden, you may want to you, you be a little skeptical of what's what the hell is going on. Uh, all right. She is Kelly Richmond Pope. She's an accounting professor at DePaul University, and she's the documentarian of this uh, must-see documentary about Rita Crunwell's $53 million embezzlement from the city of Dixon, Illinois. The documentary, All the Queen's Horses, you can get on Netflix and, and on demand. Uh, Kelly Richmond Pope, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Good luck with the documentary. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. And she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. This is The Morning Show. More Chicago radio listeners are choosing. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Seems like summer just got started, but it's not too soon to start thinking about the fall, at least when it comes to your child's education. Registration for fall enrollment for grades 7 through 12 is happening now at St. John's Northwestern Military Academy providing young men and now women with an outstanding education and preparation for life. Since 1884, St. John's Northwestern Military Academy in the beautiful Lake County region of Southeast Wisconsin has been developing the minds and shaping the character of young men from around the country and around the world. 
many of whom have gone on to achieve great success. And now, that same opportunity is available for young women. They prepare cadets for success in life by instilling a solid work ethic, an understanding of the value of integrity and teamwork, and the ability to think critically, communicate well, and function in a diverse and ever-changing world. To learn more about fall enrollment or to schedule a visit, call 1-800-SJ-CADET. That's 1-800-SJ-CADET. Or visit their website, sjnma.org. My name is Lauren Sullivan, and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis nine years ago, and I was severely disabled. And about six years ago, my mother had found Balance of Nature, so we decided to give it a try because at that point, uh, nothing was helping. I was skeptical at first, but over time I realized I had more energy levels. Um, I was sleeping better, which was huge, and my hair looked better, my skin looked better, my nails looked better, and then I was able to weed off some of those medications. And I know, had I not found Balance of Nature, I would not be living the quality of life that I am now. When you call, use discount code CHICAGO, and we'll take 35% off your first preferred set of fruits and veggies and have them shipped to you free. Call 800-246-8751. That's one 800 Two four six eight seven five one, or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code CHICAGO. This is Dan Prof with 60 Seconds of Sanity for Upstream-Ideas.com. What a contrast, right? At the same time President Trump was stumbling through his post-game presser with Putin, which necessitated a next-day contraction retraction, former President Obama was in South Africa treating the world to his soaring rhetoric, thereby reminding us how good we had it. That's the D.C. press corps' version of events. Unfortunately for Democrats, Obama's tawdry sentimentality and life's little instruction book maxims hold up about as well over time as do his policies. Obama got away with congenial disdain for the Bible and gun clingers, but his political progeny, not to mention his administration's apparatchiks are not nearly as adroit. Obama's veiled invective is weak tea compared to his former CIA director's call for a firing squad. Obama's cliche-ridden claptrap lacks the appeal of Adam Schiff's Manchurian candidate conspiracy theories or a business insider deep dive on bugging soccer balls. Obama served as a veneer for the left's ugliness. Trump has unleashed it and marginalized Obama as a political asset in the process. Now Trump leads the left's parade of horribles around by their pee hats in full public view. It's messy and Trump is sloppy, but like the 1983 Chicago White Sox, Trump is winning ugly. Hey, Craig and Leslie here from In The Know. I love to barbecue, but there's nothing worse than running out of propane in the midst of cooking. It's all about being prepared, and that's how we look at your retirement planning. Absolutely. That's why our whole team at Wealth Management Group is fired up about helping you be ready. Tune in each week as we discuss practical ways to be ready for your retirement. Find us at investwithwmg.com and pick Wealth Management Group to be your plus one this summer. Listen to In the Know Sunday mornings at 10 right here on AM 560, The Answer. Hey, Dave. You in for golf this weekend? Oh, I can't. I promised I'd find a plumber to fix a sink and a painter to paint the... Just use Angie's List. Uh, doesn't that cost money? Not at all. It's free to find pros in your area who can do the work. You can even read ratings and reviews from other customers. What about roofing pros? Angie's List has pros for everything. And to save time, they'll even match you to the best pros for the job. Oh, that's awesome. Looks like I'll be able to play after all. Find the best pros for your next project at Angie'sList.com. A business needs to be built on a great foundation, one with the framework of integrity and tradition. With the experience of three generations of master builders, that's what Tyler Lane Construction wants to recreate on your next project. Their approach starts with TLC's veteran project managers, seasoned, hands-on professionals who understand job site issues. With a rock-solid foundation for your success, they'll handle the intricacies of project admin and coordination of work crews. Tyler Lane Construction employs state-of-the-art safety measures and strict adherence to budgets and schedules. And just like you, their project managers take extra pride in the work they do because every project needs TLC. See for yourself at TylerLaneInc.com. Ignite the vision for your own commercial renovation by clicking on the project videos to see the award-winning upgrade of Lane Tech High School, the renovation of the Harper College Engineering and Tech Center, and more for your restoration.